So how would... What, All right, we... stream should be live, so um, I don't think anybody will join us just yet, but if you are, welcome, welcome. Um, so we're, we're recording now, so Andy, if you want to go ahead and handle the introductions for stuff since you're the GM, and I'll start posting announcements everywhere. Introductions? Introductions. I have players. They're good. I will let them all tell them everyone. So if you would please tell your character's name. Brief description of who your character is. As a reminder, one for everybody here and for anybody who might be listening to the stream. Because we did not stream the zero, zero point five, whatever you want to call it. And it is not up yet, which is part of my plan for when I get home. So who wants to start? Oh, I can start. I'm Joel. I'm playing uh, Lady Morgana. She is a, a young lady who is not happy with where the world is expecting her to be, so is out now seeking some adventure and in life as a um, investigator. She might not have a proper idea yet of the value of money. She is an elf. Uh, she is tall and probably slightly overdressed for what she's pretending to be. <laughs> mm, awesome. I'll go next, I guess. Uh, I'm Chris. I'm playing Waymont Cromwell, who is uh, an elven mage and upper-class professional fop. Uh, he is also slightly overdressed uh, and is kind of in a bad way with his family at the moment, hence his presence here. Or the money, you understand. Isn't it always about money? Oh, yes. Who's next? Hear me typing. All right, who hasn't gone other than Brad? Gone other than Brad? <clears throat> I'm Lexi. I'm playing an elven explorer that goes by the name River. Uh, he is trying to build connections and uh, skill sets to well, start a community for the Boojums that is not related or reliant on the humans. So, uh, basically speaking, we're a bunch of elves. We have a token human, though. Yeah, yeah, we, we got our face. <laughs> You guys have your token human. Yeah, that's Again? my character. Yeah, our face. I don't know how I feel about that designation. Because I've been the... Uh, in, in previous games, I've been described as the mouth. The mouth is on the face. It's still weird. <laughs> I mean, it's close enough. Either way, you know. All right. Are we down to just Brad? Uh, no, there's me to go as well. Oh, your turn then. Okay. Um, I'm playing August Ezekiel Ford. He's an investigator, another elf. Um, he has long black hair, grey eyes, Caucasian skin tone. He's about six foot one, and he's wearing a cheap suit. So he is very definitely not underdressed. Uh, overdressed, even. Awesome. Brad, you ready? Just about there. I'm um, just finishing posting on one more Discord here. I figure I might as well share it with all the different communities that I'm on. There we go. All right, 
Alrighty, so um, I am Brad. I am the line developer for 1879, uh, and I am going to be playing Nigel Fulmore, who describes himself as an engineer, uh, but has a hidden secret with some different abilities that he doesn't really care for. Uh, he is actually a galvanic mage. So don't be surprised if you don't hear him using any magical abilities. That's fine. I can do that for you. Hey, Brad, are we friends on Twitter? I'm not on Twitter. Oh, you're not on Twitter. Okay. Okay. We'll fix that. Okay. So, next up is who wants to do our recap? So, I like to start every game with a recap. It, one, refreshes everybody's memories, and two, GM note, it tells me as a GM what's important to you guys. So who wants to start the recap, and then other people can join in with anything that they think is important that hasn't been covered yet? And if nobody wants to, I'm going to make Lexi do it, just flat out, be honest, because she's done these before. Hmm. I do believe I just heard tag. You're it, Lexi. You, can you recap for us? We have joined a recently founded uh, uh, private investigator uh, company uh, called Not uh, Notia, uh, where we received our first assignment to find a missing child of an aristocratic family. Uh, during our investigations, we discovered that uh, she was, had suffered from looking glass fever and became an elf. Much to her family's dismay, uh, we have uh, found uh, uh, hints of her selling jewelry to a local pawn shop and possible all locations that she has uh, uh, enough funds to stay at for a while. Anyone have anything to add? Morgana may have bought all the girls' jewellery from the pawn shop. It's only every bit that she's been told was hers. So. We did talk we did. to the parents and such, didn't we? We did. And, uh, ah. you know, they told us some things. I'm going to add that the father of the young lady in question is not necessarily an unloving or bad dad. He is, however, an overwhelmed father of five girls and a wife who has obviously gone into some depression, who has a um, who's very religious. And not only did her daughter change from looking glass fever, but you're unsure of exactly what happened, but they were having a sixth child, a son, and the baby didn't make it long at best. <laughs> the father and the young lady in question argued over how medicated the mother was, and that's when she left. It's been hinted at, if nothing else, that part of the reason she left is the argument with the dad and probably, possibly some guilt over her mother's perception of now she's an elf. Things like she doesn't think she'll be able to find a good match for her daughter now that she's been changed. Stuff like that. And like I said, the father's not necessarily an unloving. He is, however... 
one has five daughters, two has a business to run, three is overwhelmed and has a wife who's not doing great with her mental health. Um, anything else that I'm not remembering that is probably important? I don't think so. I think we've hit the main highlights. We've got a couple of other various clues and bits and bobs of information, which we will, I think, address as they come relevant. Mm-hmm. And you had two possible places to look at housing that the guy at the pawn shop told you about. One was where he lives, and the other was in the same basic area yep Can I just sorry. Check, can actually hear me? I'm sorry. Do you know her name? Sorry. Can you repeat that? Can I just check? Can everybody actually hear me? Because apparently Joel's having problems. Yeah, you're coming through just fine for me. Oh, so that's weird. Yep. Okay. That's cool. Thank you. All right. I believe we are what early afternoon, mid afternoon at this point. Probably somewhere in there. I mean, we started in the uh, we started at nine for our introductions. Yeah. Well, for the yeah, and got the case. Went to his office. Went to their house. I'd say you're probably mid afternoon by now. But we're probably about to hit tea time. On shop, so yeah, probably about tea time. About low tea. So, we all love tea. Don't worry about it. Everybody likes tea. So we're we're playing characters. What is it you guys want to do? You want to have tea, tea and talk things through? Of course. So do you guys want to drink tea together and have a break? Do you guys want to go to one of these two boarding homes? Well, heck, I Which think for our recap, we could just consider bombs. that us sitting at tea and and talking about everything. That, that works for me. Cool. How about everybody else? Yep, recapping of what we know and whatnot and such. And I kind of like that. All recaps are now tea time. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. All right. So, where is your next? What are you guys gonna do? You've had tea. So, the two places that we know that we can go to to investigate are uh, remind me boarding houses two boarding uh, houses two boarding houses one in which the pawn shop own the, the pawn shop guy he also lives at and then there's the other one that he doesn't live at but is in the neighborhood that he told her about right well why don't we go to the one that he told her about first? Well, he told her about both. There's the one he lives at and the one he doesn't live at. Right. If okay. he hadn't seen her, the one he doesn't live at would seem the more likely? Yes. Sounds like a, a good idea. So that's the one he does not? Well, yes, because, um, as was just said, um, if he were living at the same place she were at, then he'd have seen her. At Assuming some point. she's there anyway. Yeah. But if he hasn't seen her, then she's probably not there regardless. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. I didn't think of that. The reason that I had in my head that she wouldn't be there is because that guy's kind of a jerk and a creep. So she go to the other one. <laughs> it was so part of my consideration why she might 
he picked the other one, but I figured if he'd, if he'd been at the same place, he would have seen her. No, that makes it's, a lot more sense. That's a, that's especially, a much... especially well, if he's a jerk and a creep. Well, yeah. He that's hasn't exactly been a trip and a creep thing. to us, but I think that's because we gave him a lot of money. Okay, well, to be fair, hey. Morgana gave him a lot of money. That's true. <laughs> okay. So yeah. you cut off... I was gonna say um, the armed elf is probably a deterrent to being hit on too. The, the armed elf has quite a lot of charisma. I'll just point out. Um, <laughs> so it might not be that detrimental to being hit on, but probably changes the the audience, as it were. <laughs> Well, shall we go and have a look around? We shall. Okay, sorry about that. I have a really hard time unmuting this thing on here. And I, it's a newer phone and it hates me. I actually also think that it could be because within like two days I cracked the protective screen case. Because I'm talented like that. Would we expect anything so, different? So, you guys had to... Not from me, if you've ever met me. In real life, I have the worst case of the drop seas you've ever met. That's expected. It is expected for me to. I once got a phone, and within 24 hours, I didn't have a case on it yet. I'd only had it for 24 hours. The case was coming in. I dropped it, smashed it, had to buy a new phone. Wasn't worth fixing the screen on. It was awful. But, okay. You guys head down, and... Very quickly, especially those of you who are not necessarily as um, upper class as others, realize that the area you're going to is in the docks, or near the docks. And it is perhaps not the type of neighborhoods for genteel people. It's a little rough, it's a little tumbled, it's a lot more street urchins, muggers, gang, um dock workers, uh, people off of the ships, sailors, that's what they're called, yes. So, a little bit rougher territory in this area. You make it to the boarding house, and like a lot of boarding houses at the time, basically, it's a... Kind of what they used to do out here with big old houses when people fall on hard times is they rent out the rooms in the house. And then depending on what you pay, you might have like meals somewhat included, like maybe breakfast or dinners included that you have in like the main area. But the person who owns it usually has like a room on the main floor and kind of takes care of that common parlor kitchen type of stuff. So you, you'll knock on the door, I'm assuming. Who's knocking? Who's who's your point person? I mean, if no one else is going to, I could go. Okay. But, uh, I'm a little upper class for this sort of thing. And that may or may not be in your favor. Or I could have an ask around because, well, you know, just look at me. <laughs> so... Who's it going to be? I think I've got streetwise. Yeah, I've got streetwise. I can go and have an ask around. All right. right. Good. So there's a knock on the door. And a, um elderly gentleman answers the door. And he's got to be, I don't know, mid-60s, late-60s. Possibly a well-preserved early 70s, but in this type of neighborhood, that's not so likely. <laughs> and he's like, just kind of looks you over and looks over the entire group. Are you lost? Do you need directions? No, no, I'm not lost. Um, I'm actually looking for somebody. If you know of them, I believe they were staying here. Well, who and and why why are you looking for them? Oh, 
here we go. Um, her name is Abigail, and I just want to have a quick word with her. And he looks you guys over again, and he gets this kind of frown and this kind of set to his shoulders. Well, not sure, but I'll be happy to take a card, and if I see this person, maybe I'll give it to him. Also, what would you want to talk to him about? It's a personal matter. Yeah, I'll take a card. Do you have a card? Uh, we picked up some cards, didn't we, from the... We did. Yeah, the office cards. Yep. At um, 10 of the first impressions on him. Um, yeah, I've got that as well. I forgot about that. All right, you guys roll your first impressions and tell me what you got. I will also do this, as I also have first impression. But, uh, I mean, I haven't said anything to the man, so I guess I'll just sort of be standing there. Looking yeah, regal. Smile sweetly at them, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> that was quite bland. I know we didn't discuss this beforehand, but... Just to throw out there, I think we'd probably be safe in saying her mother's ill. Mm. Pretty much, but uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't, I didn't think this approach was going to get anything out of this guy, to be honest. <laughs> Nine on the first impressions. Eight. It's not bad. It's not enough to necessarily warm him up to you guys. But not bad. If so you guys hand over a card? You try any other tactics with them? I will we... do my best. Sir, so we, we would like to talk to the young lady on a matter of urgency. We, we are friends, and there is a, um, a family matter that we feel she, we feel she would like to know about. His eyes get a little harder. Friends, huh? Oh boy. And he'll if that, if somebody has a card out, he'll snatch the card. If not, he just closes the door. Yeah, I was about to hand the card over. Yeah, so he he literally kind of rudely snatches it out of your hand and shuts the door. Can I bench get a foot in the doorway? You could. That's an initiative. Well, it's worth a try. Oh, no, it's very worth a try because he's a little old man and uh, that initiative roll does not look good on my end. So. And that's six. And that beats his four. So you totally managed to get a foot in the door. But if looks could kill, this little old guy has the looks of... Is there some reason it's a problem she's our friend? I'm going to draw my lips to lane at that. All right, re repeat that so I make sure I heard you correctly. Yeah, Is I'm, I'm going to... Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm saying, is there some sort of problem that she's our friend? I'm trying to imply that you're a liar. Now get your foot out of my door. Yep, thought that was how that was going to go. You do you, uh, do any of you mind terribly if I have a try? Oh, if you say this out loud, now he has an eyebrow raised, right? Because he's got a foot in the door, and, you know. I, I will uh, pick up my cane and walk and walk over to him. Sir, good afternoon. My name is Waymont. And as you can see from the card, we're with an investigation agency. The reason... He, he nods curtly at you. 
The reason we've come to your premises is because we believe a young lady is staying with you. Uh, gosh, names. <laughs> Abigail? Abigail. Uh, yes, her name is Abigail. And um, yes, as you've probably surmised, we're, we're not exactly friends. We haven't actually met. The thing is that uh, her father sent us and the reason is because her mother's health has uh, declined somewhat and uh, we would like to bring her home he kind of softens he actually does and he goes i'll let abby know but if she doesn't want to go she doesn't have to and you're not making her mm. he seems actually rather protective i it's uh, probably a bit surprising that he would be pr so protective. I understand. But if I may be pro so presumptuous, would it be all right if we were to speak to the young lady at some time? If she wants to. I'll give her your card. Thank you. Is the foot removed from the door? I will remove the foot from the door. And it's it's a very solid click as he closes it. Uh, a Waymont will turn around and go, and that, dear fellow, is how you do it. <laughs> Anybody want to do like a perception to see what they thought of him, to see if they noticed anything? Awareness, I don't know, anything you got that might help? Investigation, for those of you who have it, hint, hint, stuff like that. Actually, while this was going on, I was hoping to... Well, I'll have an oh. evidence analysis, but... That works. Okay. So apparently my mic was... I mean, it's kind of well... a sidestepy thing, but it works. I mean, basically, you're trying to get the evidence aware... In a, uh, of how he's reacting to stuff. While the exchange was going down, I actually wanted to hang back. I wanted to case the building itself a little bit. Absolutely, you can do that. All right, I'm going to roll civil engineering for that. Okay. Not August's best day. Four. A four? Four? Mm. Six. Yeah, I, he seems protective, which might be a bit unusual since, I mean, she's only been there for, what, a few days? A week. And he totally does not believe that you guys were friends. That, that out of four, you totally know that. All right, Brad. I got a nine for case in the building. So it's a generally similar building to most of the things in the neighborhood. It's two stories. Your guess is it's probably been split into six to eight rooms. Per rent. Without going to the back, you are pretty damn sure. I mean, you haven't gone to the back to double check, but you are pretty damn sure there is both a back entrance and a cellar entrance. Probably a coal-fired furnace, I'm guessing. So most likely the, Probably. Coal, the coal chute to get down there. Well, and also just that cellars were important to a lot of homes because before a lot of refrigeration, that's how you kept things cool. Well, right. But and it's good I... storage. But yes, there's probably a coal chute. There's probably a coal burning. But as far as points of entry... And those are usually, you know, you're pretty damn sure there's a back entrance to this place, and you're, you're pretty damn sure that there's a there's a cellar door. There's probably a, a specific coal chute, too. You're very correct on that. Um, it's doesn't have a lot of yard, but most of these buildings don't. At one point, this was probably a single home, but that point was a long time ago. All right. Any you guys local, tell me. Anybody else? Any local animals? Like stray dogs, cats? Uh, yeah, there's a, there's rats and cats almost anywhere, and there's probably stray dogs someplace. But I don't know of any city that doesn't have stray cats. Or pigeons. Birds Benches. aren't real. Birds aren't real. I don't, I'm not a big bird person, so. But, uh, yes, there's definitely... 
Before I go to that, anybody else have want to roll see. anything awareness or anything like that? I could roll awareness if you like. Yes. That is uh, a thing I can do. Perception test. Just to get an idea of him, but I'm um, not expecting much from it. <laughs> so I got a 10 on awareness. That's not bad. Um, the protectiveness that you guys are sensing is real. It's he's not. It's not faked, and it's not like creepy. It's yeah, a lot more weird. like grandpa, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. Does it seem to, to Does it seem to me like he knows her well, or at least more well than he should after like a day? Not necessarily. Um, it feels more like if you just had to take a guess in the dark. I'm an old guy. I know this area. That girl really doesn't belong in this area, and she's young, and somebody should be looking out for it. Makes sense. Like, it feels a lot like he's actually just a good guy. Mm -hmm. I'll tuck my cane under my arm. Well, I think that this should be handled quite delicately. There, there's no need to, well, exacerbate the situation. Lexi, you want to roll yours and tell me what you got for trying to chit-chat with any local critters? An 11. An 11, that's pretty good. What are you asking? If there's any new, nice uh, young ladies with ears like mine that have been feeding and taking care and maybe telling you her woes. You, uh, you uh, find a dog. You're not totally sure if it's a stray or just lives in the neighborhood and isn't kept in a house and yep 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 i like her she gives me biscuits that's that's really quite uh, lovely now does this one so no color or anything like that no. That time period, you actually didn't see a lot of that. People were not as pet crazy as we are nowadays. I mean, some people were, but this type of neighborhood, you're not going to see a lot of that. They they do roam in packs. So some people had pets that were just, you know. Well, house part of the time, anyhow. But yeah, no collar. All right. Um, someplace well that I could slip, uh, set a card that's kind of protected from the elements. <coughs> Sorry, what was that? Uh, someplace that I could uh, put a card that's protected away from the elements. You, okay. I'm sure you could find a place. All right. Uh, get the dog to come with me. I'll put a card in, in that, that little spot. Get he demands some. a biscuit or he's not going with you. Oh, I, 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 will, I will use for Are you trying to leave a calling card for the dog? With the dog, sort of, ha ha have, have, you know, Lassie situation. Bring, bring that nice lady over to this cart. And then, you know, if, if she shows okay. up, I will come back and I will, I will give you immaculate food. Is that like a biscuit? Uh, yeah, I, I can, I can bring, I can bring you really good biscuits. I'm here, and you'll give me really good business. Got it. I can do that. Yep, yep, Thank yep. 
I, I, I really appreciate you. All right. What's everybody else doing? Where are we going? I would say once we've finished our exchange with the old man, let's step back and maybe pace up and down the street a little bit, see what all's around in the neighborhood. I'm thinking maybe to find a spot for us to hole up for a little bit and. Yes, yeah, so is there anywhere like a pub or like uh, yep. something like that nearby? There's a pub maybe two blocks down. Seems to be very much a local. A lot of the stuff that's nearby are. Um, well, there seems to be a pawn shop. There's also several other boarding houses. Um, within two blocks, like straight down the street, two blocks is a pub. There's a couple of warehouses nearby. There seems to be kind of um, the equivalent to a general store corner market type of thing anywhere with either like outdoor That's... seating or just a big open window so we can keep an eye on places you know they kind of case the area um, has some big windows and would probably be the easiest as far as not looking out of place because close to supper time you could easily sit up the pub for a couple of hours and nobody would notice um, the corner store also has some big windows. I don't know how long you could stay there without them being like, why are you standing around? Uh, the pawn why? shop, also, yeah, mo yeah, I mean, the pawn shop, you could hang out there for a little bit. You could also kind of meander, you know, go to the corner store, go to the pub, go to the flea mar or the pawn shop. Or in a different order because the pawn shop will probably close. Well, it definitely closes before the um, the pub does. So, really think the best idea is just to go to the pub and have a drink. I think that sounds an excellent idea. Go to the pub and wait for it all to blow over. Yes. A Good proper, place. A proper British man response. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you guys go to the pub, get a table, preferably near the window. <coughs> that possible, yeah. Yeah, shouldn't be a problem. You're not seated for terribly long before someone comes over. Say, um, young, orcish. I can't. I don't want to call him a boy, but he's in that early teen phase it's You've... a boy but they don't think he is and in this time period he's almost i mean he could be on his own for all you know at this point so it comes over and basically is like you want to hear the specials and what are you drinking well i'll take tea if they serve it and if they don't probably a pint This is a pub by the docks. Of course they have a pint. A pint they have. At this hour, they don't usually serve tea. At this hour, it's you, you know, a pint. Got it. <laughs> Rest of y'all. You wouldn't say you all. Rest of yous. I'll have a beer, thank you. Two pints. Pint. And he'll look pint around the rest of the table. Well. Like that for Pint and a bit of stew if you got it. Pint and some stew. Good. Anybody else want stew? We no, serve it with soda bread. Yeah, let's start out with that and we'll see where the night takes us from here. Actually, well, you know what? Sure. We might be here a while. Just some bread for me, please. I give you kind of a look. But, all right. <coughs> Four stews, one bread. Five pints. And he hustles off. 
comes back shortly there with the beers, goes back again, comes out with the bread and the stews. And have you ever had actual old school traditional Irish soda bread? So amazing. So Irish soda bread is kind of if you eat it within the first 30, 40 minutes, not terrible. But after that, it can be a bit hard, which is often one why it was served with like stew or soup. And it's kind of like um, it usually has score marks. So you get a quarter of the, the mound. People used to think that maybe that was or a lot of people thought that that had to do with it was a cross. Now it's an X. It's a scoring mark because it gets hard and then they would could just break it apart. Fair enough. Yeah. Because I'm crazy and occasionally I look into weird things like. How do you make actual Irish soda bread like how they used to? Modern Irish soda bread is very different. Like in the U.S. especially, they'll put all sorts of crazy stuff like raisins and cranberries and all sorts of stuff in it. And it's like, yeah, that is nowhere near what it was originally used or designed for. But okay. So, but he brings everything out. If you're there for a while, he'll, you know... Do you need another pint? He'll clear the table. Typical waiter things. The place gets pretty hopping 15, 20 minutes after you guys get there. There's a lot of obviously sailors, dock workers, locals. It's a local pub. And a lot of them know each other, so they'll yell things at each other. Do you guys do anything there other than keep your eyes out for possibly Abigail? I'll be looking for that, but at the same time, it might be an idea to be listening to what's being talked about generally, in case anything comes up that piques our interest. Great idea. Uh, perception, awareness, tell me if you've got something that you think works better. Uh, probably awareness is the best one for me. Although I thought awesome. that was more for magical things, but I'll roll it. Now, I, mean, I always thought awareness was just for if you were specifically looking or that you were kind of better at it than typical perception. Yeah, no, awareness oh. is just your general, I'm looking around and focusing on this thing. It basically yeah. means you're better at it than straight perception. Right. Yep. Okay, nine. Good. Anybody yeah. else? Yeah, I should do um, an awareness as well. Let me get the right dice out here. Oh, they're over here. I may make some small talk with the locals and see if I can find anything out. See if anyone's seen a lady, a girl meeting her description. With streetwise. Okay, I'll come back to that. I've got Anybody nine, else? On, nine on awareness as well. Twelve on awareness. I'm sorry, how much? Twelve. Twelve, okay. Anybody else? Okay. I'll, I guess I can just keep an eye out. Okay, so you're keeping an eye out. So, on the nine, you hear a few people talking about a... And it's kind of, you're, you're not really clear. Like, is it just like a, a meeting? Is it a club? But something specific for Bujo. On the 12, you catch a little bit more of it. And apparently, it's some sort of meeting for Bujams. And you're not, like, are they trying to, like, gather? It's weird. Like, you're not totally sure why they're gathering. But it, it's, it doesn't sound like a club. It sounds almost like a political thing. If okay. that makes sense. Like, you're yeah. not... That doesn't quite feel right, but it feels more like that than it does a club. 
but there's a meeting tonight. Okay. Otherwise, most of what you guys hear is, you know, did you know that John's wife is sleeping around? Did you know that, you know, so-and-so quit whatever company or blah, blah, blah? Um, let's see. Small talk. You talk to a few people. Generally, you actually do find a couple of people who have seen Abigail, but she didn't seem to interact with them much. It's mostly just that they've seen her on the street. They've seen her around. She's even been to the pub to eat once. She's definitely in the neighborhood. Uh, um, 16 on street wise, because I, I rolled it as well. So. That's good. Now, the 16 on street wise, what are you trying to find out? More about Abigail or more about. More about Abigail. Uh, um, if she, if anyone knows if she's working, that sort of thing. Or anyone who. Oh. Might- 16 is really good. Um, she has unpleasant uh, attitudes towards a, a a pretty young elf who's just moved into the neighborhood and probably knows nobody. So she's not looking for work, but she should be at this meeting tonight. So is whoever you're talking to. 16 is pretty good. So she's... Excellent. Um, I will... She's getting involved with the um, with this group, and it's it's a group to help those afflicted. Well, I'm not going to have to feign interest in food and political groups. I would be actually interested in that. So, uh, we'll ask if I could be pointed in the direction of where the meeting is. Oh, of course. Basically, they're having a gathering on one of the docks that isn't going to be busy tonight. And they'll tell you which dock. Dude will even point out, like, you know, you're going to go down that way. You're going to turn at, you know, blah, blah. Yeah, I will. Even says you should bring your friends. I mean, except for the one. But, I mean, you hang with whoever you want. I will. Now, there's so many people who haven't changed. that uh, Some of them are on our side as well, I will say. And he kind of nods and shrugs, but, yeah. I will um, buy him a pint or whatever he's drinking. I believe that is the polite thing to do. Very polite. And head back over and pass on what I have found to the rest of the rest of the group. The meeting is at about seven PM. You guys still probably have a couple of hours. So she's becoming political about it. Interesting. Well, honestly, dear, if you're paying attention, everything's political. Well, yes. Well, and this sounds like it's just an aid group, at least on the surface. It does sound that way, doesn't it? It won't be. Yes, my thoughts exactly. They weren't exactly being secretive about inviting newcomers. Um, <laughs> and let's be honest here, my accent is entirely fit. It probably fits worse than Abigail's in this neighborhood. Which suggests there's 
less dodgy dealings going on. So, did you hear if this is their first meeting, or is this an additional meeting to one that they've done before? Said, I think it's the... I think it may be one of their first large meetings. Hmm. Let's see. Well, I think it would behoove us to attend. wise for me to try to find some sort of addition to my ears blend in a little bit you're trying to say you want to pose as an elf well it would certainly help or it might make it worse Uh uh-huh The alternative would be me staying back somewhere else, which I'm it's not necessarily off. opposed to, if we need to have well, an outlook once elsewhere. We, once we know where it is, would it not be a good idea for you to, for example, oversee from a distance? Right, that, that's what I'm saying. So I'm not, I'm not opposed to playing lookout. Well, if something dubious is going on, it means, well, not all of us walk into the trap, as it were. Mm-hmm. How long do we have until... A couple of hours. Let's go take a look at the area, I think. Uh, uh, well, someone should probably stay back and keep an eye... Well, do we want somebody to stay back and keep an eye on the street, or do we want to just all head there, because we're According to the rumbling, she should be there. Well, that's kind of... I suggest we all go and have a look around. Yes. Not a bad idea. So the decision is you're all going to go and Brad's going to look around? I think we're all going to go have a look around. And then when the meeting gets closer, they're going to go and your character is going to stay back a bit and kind of try to find a vantage point where you can get some overview. Yeah, I'll find some sort of perch to, to put myself at. It's a dock. There's going to be a warehouse or something nearby you can climb up on, I'm sure. Well, just one that's accessible is the main thing. Yeah. Okay. You guys finish up. You pay. I'm sure somebody leaves a tip for the boy. Yep. Hmm. Um... It's it's a dock. There's rope, there's water, there's boats nearby, there are warehouses nearby. At this point, it's kind of winding down. Whoever's unloading the last bit of unloading for the day is trying to get it done. I know docks always have this kind of seedy, you know, people think of them as seedy. But really, they're just mostly people trying to get their job done. Now, get the stuff off the boat, get the stuff loaded up onto whatever so it can get to the warehouse or wherever they're going. You know, if this is your home port, get it done so you can see your family for, you know, the first time in three months. So a lot of them are kind of bigger guys because they're moving boxes all the time and they're kind of brisk and burly. Well, and this is London, so this should be river docks. Yes, they are river docks. But it's mostly stuff coming in from the sea in London, so. Well, you get a lot of other stuff imported in, but it'll be imported by a major boat, put on a dock there, to be put on a river boat to be brought in. Yeah. That is exactly what this is. 
Anybody here? I should take note of. Sorry, it sounded like there was a question there, but I couldn't catch it. Anything you want to take note of? Anything that I should take note of? Anybody doing something I should either respond to or keep in mind? Well, let's have a look and see if there's any place that... Um, any place that our token human can go. I think you were looking for my name. It's Nigel. <laughs> Nigel. Me and names are something that happens to other people. There are two really good perches for Nigel. Each has a slightly different problem. One seems to have actual, like, warehouse guards. The other seems to be harder to climb. Which one does Nigel want to try to do well i'm not particularly athletic but given that i'll be on my own it's probably better that i go somewhere that isn't guarded would uh wilderness survival help in uh climbing and, and finding places. Um, it's not really a wilderness, so not really. That, and he's got two good places. That, he just I, has what to. What I need is a climbing skill, and I don't have it, so it's probably. Or good to or, be. or or so you can go to that pawn shop and just buy a ladder. <laughs> oh, because that's not that. suspicious. We just come walking down the street with a ladder. <laughs> oh, plenty of people walk the streets with climbing. ladders. <laughs> Yeah, it happens if, all the time in London. If we perform a couple of trap falls with it, I'll just assume we're practicing I mean, a musical. If you have a few people with you that might be able to help give you a lift, and that could, you know, give you a bonus. Uh, I was going to say, that one that looks harder to climb, um, would it be a... Is there a way to, like, acrobat your way up? I don't have it. Yes, but I'm dexterous and I have rope. So she's offering to climb up herself, tie a rope, and make it easier for you. Yeah, okay. you can do that. Gotta say, I am actually a little curious as to why you have rope with you, but all right. <laughs> I am an explorer. We're in London. It's been explored. It's been explored. <laughs> All right, let me know what your acrobat is. Ten. Uh, I got a ten, Andy. Okay. I'll say you can get up there. Find a good place to tie the rope off, drop the rope down. So, with the rope's aid, that should at least give you an extra two, two steps, Brad, or a plus to your choice. Personally, I like the risk of the, you know, two steps. Yeah, no, I usually prefer doing steps. So, are we doing strength-based for this one? You can do strength or you can do dex. I'll let I, you, because both technically could help. So whichever one is better okay. for you. I didn't know if I was having to go straight up, in which case it would be strength, or if I'm kind of shimmying where I would use dex. But if I can use both, See, I will use person dex. I figure, personally, I figure it would be however you, like, some people it might be better for them to just strength and haul straight up, and other people it might be, but there's a better foothold here and kind of more dex. Well, it more so, just depends on the, the area we're in, but if I have both, then okay. I'll, I'll try to shimmy and use dex. Works for me. Alrighty. I'm hardly ever a mean GM. Hardly. Okay, so that is a roll up there. 
I got a 13. Oh, dude, you even made it look like, why are you needing help? It good. Well, the two steps helped, so... I know. <laughs> they gave me but two that, dice. But that's a game mechanic rather than a what it looks like <laughs> to the outside observers. So, yeah, you have no trouble getting up there. You are up there. And then after... The explorer climbs back down. You probably pull the rope up so it doesn't just have a rope dangling off, I'm assuming. Yeah. Just, no you know, makes sense. It's easy for somebody to come up and tell me to get down. Uh, so, do I know how to rappel down? I'm going to assume if you could get up that with the rope, you can get down pretty easy. Down is almost always easier than up on something. I mean, like, it hurts worse if you fall, but... I'll make you roll if you really want me to, but I was just assuming that this was going to be something yeah. you could do pretty well. I mean, it's only a couple, what, three stories up that tops, you know. You'll, you'll be all right. Unless you want to roll for it, and then you can roll and take your chances in case it doesn't go well. Uh, I don't, I don't want to roll. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, you rappel down... And Nigel pulls the rope up. And you guys are set to go to this meeting. Why do I get this impression that this will be less of a meeting and more of a rally? You would be correct. You guys are one of the first ones there. There seems to be a elven lady, a troll, and a snark that most of the people are facing. And they're kind of generally chit-chatting with a few people up towards the front. Abby isn't quite here yet. She'll be here in a few minutes. Do you guys just go straight over to Abby when she gets here, or do you wait and kind of see what's going on first? What do we, what do we got? Uh, I'm for waiting and seeing what's going on so we know how to better approach Abby. And it may be better to approach Abby while leaving rather than when she arrives. That work for everybody? Yep. That's fine. Okay. Sounds like that's an agreement. All right. So the elf... None of them are necessarily, like, bad-looking individuals, but the elf is particularly very... And not just pretty, but charismatic. She... One of those people... I don't know if you've ever in real life met someone who just seems to lighten up a room. Or ever been around somebody who, like, is just that charismatic that when they walk in, you just... You have to, you have to notice them. Yeah. They have to get attention. They just... Something about them does this. And she does it well. Like, it's very hard when you see her and she starts talking for you not to be... Entranced is too strict of a word, but <laughs> interested in what she's going to say. Like, you... She just has that... Presence. Charismatic pull. Presence. There you go. That's a good word. Presence. Is this at all magical? Are you gonna check? I'm gonna check. So, check, um, oh goodness. There's a, there's a skill you use for that. Use that. My brain Astral is dumb. Sight? Awareness? There you go. Astral sight. Oh, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. okay. Dang. What'd you get? Hang on. I'm going to do some math. Okay. 16, 24, 29, 32. She's a freaking Christ. Oh. Cool. So, yes and no. She's definitely using what you would probably, because I believe you have it, would recognize as something like first impressions. And there's another one that helps put people at ease. 
and I'm trying to remember what it is it's like um smile or something I don't remember off the top of my head oh, winning smile winning smile what was it Brad uh, yeah winning smile is the skill yeah but this is more than just as a skill this is being magically projected but it's a but it's on top of a already natural ability ah like She's she would be charismatic her own without using... yep, she's literally boosting her own charisma. Basically the equivalent of what Earthdana would call a half magic adept. Right. Yep. At least. But yes. I'll lean on my cane. <laughs> and there's the general warm welcome to everybody. And an introduction, and I will, um, she names herself, um, Elizabeth, and she introduces the other two as basically John and Robert. And she's so happy to see so many people here for in need of the help that they can help, that they can bring. She's much more charismatic and much better speaking than I am today. The general gist of what she's talking about at first sounds like that they're going to do something here, but then it kind of switches to the, but you can't. They're never going to allow us. They're never going to let us be equals. They're always going to look down upon us. We're always going to be treated as second class. So what should we do? We create a society where we're not second class. And hopefully all of you are interested in helping build that society. As she continues to talk, basically what she's suggesting is, is that they have a boat that is going to take you to someplace near the Americas on an island where they are building a um, oh wow if my brain done today um, the, the term that we're using for metas in this Bujum bu bu colony bu bu basically a Bujum colony and, and an entire society where it's all Bujums Right, and gonna... it's get in on the ground floor and help us build the society and decide how we want it to look. And, and and I will tell you, you guys should all be somewhat affected probably by this. If you like to roll like a will or something, you can try to get out a part of <clears throat> the more magical effect that she's putting on top of it. But part of what she speaks to is things that are very, very true. You know, families kicking out their children or loved ones um, being looked down upon. Not, I mean, there are places where they won't even let you in. There are people who will, you know, give you a worse deal because you're no longer human. I mean, it's not everywhere, but it's definitely part of society right now. Any bonus for the uh, for that check based on the previous astral site check? Oh, yeah, since you totally know that it's magic on top of it. Yeah, I'll give you... And you had such a... I'll give you four steps. Right. Because, I mean, that was an amazing role. That deserves some amazing stuff, right? Okay. So, I have been extremely susceptible to that. I would say you, you actually probably should go down a step or two on this one. It doesn't matter. I rolled a one on, at regular step. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, no, dude, you are ready to sign up yourself, damn it. Holy crap. Right, you guys are actually not going to believe this, but I'll, I'll roll, we rolled both the dice anyways. Right, that's more sensible. Okay. What was the uh, first one? Uh, 18 on a D10 and a D8. It happens, but it, you can't have just an 18 because you have to add more to it. I know. If I it's know on I... a D10 and a D8... 
you you rolled really well and you I mean it sounds good but there's always one to catch you know and two you're just you're you're skeptical you have not fallen for this hook line and sinker to be honest right i mean no it was 18 on a d10 and d8 which means i added to it which was like it's actually 25 26 but yeah 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 so in any case again I'll be she hasn't said anything that's not okay she hasn't said anything about society that's not true yep. to a degree i mean some people think you can fight within the society and change it but she's not lying per se but you're also you are still however skeptical of this whole thing well the thing what is about you, everybody else you can, you can you can say the truth I, and still be sketchy as hell <laughs> i got a seven and i'm coming from a, a let's change the political structures from within kind of political stance naturally sorry what was your number seven seven yeah, you are, like, it sounds good, but you're not ready to sign any paperwork or anything crazy. Yeah, you're not planning on leaving London and getting on a boat. However, okay, so there should be a fourth number. Who's number four? So we heard Governor, from, from uh, Lisa. For us is the um Sorry, where am I? I will well, roll again. Probably it's your willpower. <laughs> Sorry, I completely and utterly missed that. No 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 no. It's um Oh, that's a ten. And okay, yeah, a lot like a lot like the seven. You're not, you're not like ready to sign up, but it honestly doesn't sound bad. Even on the seven, it, it doesn't sound bad at all. Oh, twenty. Oh, well then, yeah, you're skeptical. They they can make it look as pretty as they want to make it look, but. There's always a catch to these types of things, even if that catch is simply living in a colony and not in London. But you're yeah. pretty sure there's going to be some other catch. You're, you're, you're fairly skeptical. The crowd as a whole is not all that skeptical. Several people are cheering. Several people are like, when do we leave? Anybody who has eyes on Abby, Abby seems to be completely hook, line, and sinker on this. I posted earlier, I've got a, uh, I, I was, from my perch up top, I had just an 11 for the general awareness. I was mostly keeping an eye out for Abby, but also just kind of keeping an eye on the area. Yeah. So, it, you see the three talking. I don't know if you can hear much of it from where you're at, but you can see the three. And you can see that the crowd is very... Like, they're very into it. They're very eager. <clears throat> it's a very positive response. You're going to hear a bunch of um, clapping and cheering at some point. Should be about now. Um, basically, they have papers for people who are interested, who want to sign up. But you have up until the ship leaves. And the ship leaves in, like, another three days. And a bunch of people go to start signing papers. Is there anything going on behind where the group is rallied? Like, is there guards or, or somebody, like, corralling people or anything like that? Nope. Nope. Okay, so they're keeping it open. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, I mean, as far as the papers, it's almost as... And I don't know if this is... I mean, you guys don't know if this is by design or not... When people start going up to start signing papers, they have the papers, they even have, you know, ink and quill, 
but they didn't necessarily have a table, almost as if they didn't know for sure if people would sign up. They actually, like, drag a box over for people to sign up. Um, the troll, John, is the one who has the papers and the quill and the ink and all that. It seems like Robert and Elizabeth are kind of milling around, talking to people, answering questions, that type of thing. I'm going to try and sidle through the crowd and get next to Abigail. Not hard. Abigail is um, either torn between trying to get a chance to talk to Elizabeth and going to sign. I but will. she's headed towards the line to sign. So it's not hard to get near her. I will go and I would say no one is on guard. And smile. Get, get. So what do you make of that? And then introduce myself with a first impression. Okay. Of uh, 19. He smiles at you and... It's in that moment that really she just, her natural charisma just kind of seems to pop as she smiles. And she says, I'm signing up. I, I wanted to sign up on the first day that I met them, but they didn't have the papers yet. I can't wait. Imagine no humans, no judgment, a fresh start. Yes, but no indoor, no, no plumbing. <laughs> These things are never I mean, as easy as they like to make out, unfortunately. I'm sure parts of it has plumbing. This isn't the first boat, so surely some of the others have started that. And 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 she gets this very determined. Like, you ever meet a oh good young adult who is bound and determined to make a stupid decision and they're convinced that it's the best decision in the world even though you're sitting here going like it's not like going to jail decision but yes I'm totally <laughs> going to move out of mommy and daddy's house and I'm going to live in this house with 17 roommates and surely I'll find a job and it's all going to be fantastic you know that, Morgana that type never... of sorry Morgana has never met anyone who had that sort of conversation Probably because she's no, usually... But you as, but you I know, as, yes. As a player, <laughs> it's that look. It's that... I got this. I can totally... I'm an adulty adult look. Like that determination there. Now, your character may be like, really? <laughs> Morgana's usually the bright-eyed one at this point, I think. Um, I just say... Wait till we hear the reports back from from, from the first colonists. Oh, I mean, still a lot we can do to, to change the system here. If we all leave; it'll never get better. But the first ones have been there for a little while. This is like boat five. Hmm. Yeah. Who has Streetwise? Yep. Yeah. Ooh, 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 me. Everybody has street rise. Roll your street wise. Especially you, because you now have heard of the Thirteen. After listening nine, to this, five. nine. After listening to this, I'm the thirteen, because you haven't heard the five boats. This is starting to sound more <laughs> familiar that you've seen a sign or something about this at some point. Like within the last couple, three months, you've seen a few type of things. Like it's like, wait, hold on. Somewhere there was like a, you know, flyer type of thing, right? On the nine, after hearing about five boats, you're sitting here going, wait, I have heard something about this. You didn't quite realize that there had been five boats. You didn't realize exactly what it was. It hadn't connected yet. But this has been probably easily going on for six months. Since these talks about this group, 
and about this island. That's the other thing. Is it's not just a colony; it's on an island. I will wander over to where Morgana and Abigail is, and go. Have we actually heard anything back from the island? It's been going a little while now, I believe. Yeah. I'd have thought that have brought back people to report of how well it's going. Smile at Abigail. How about we we go and, and get a drink and discuss it? You you obviously seem to know more about it than we do. You, oh, I don't hardly. I mean, I know that they they've been there and it's been going great. I mean, that's what I've heard. I haven't had a chance to really get to talk to Elizabeth one on one. And you'll notice that it's Elizabeth probably has seven, eight people surrounding her, asking her questions and things like that. I mean, we, we can have a drink, but I'm signing up. I don't want to miss this boat. What's everybody else doing? I'll be watching this exchange from a distance. So you're that. paying mostly attention to the exchange? Yes. Okay. I'd, I'd probably be what trying if... to talk to Elizabeth or one of the other big three that were there. So John the troll what? is over by the oh. papers that people are signing. Elizabeth has a group of <clears> usually <throat> seven or eight people all trying to get her attention. And Robert is easier to access than Elizabeth. As he's milling around trying to answer questions and things like that. So you want to get close to Elizabeth, the snark Robert, or closer to where John has people signing papers? Uh, probably the snark Robert. Okay. Um, he's easier. You usually end up with a few people asking him questions, and then he tries to move on to answer more questions. And he does it pretty smoothly. Like, he's not quite as good as Elizabeth, but he is still fairly charismatic, and he's pretty good at moving through the crowd. Um, you overhear a lot of different questions. You know, how long is the boat ride? What type of jobs are there going to be there? You know... All right, is the housing set up yet? That type of stuff. Uh, so I guess my questions are going to be size, uh, fauna, flora, uh, location, uh, and um, like, are we bringing horses? Are we doing? Uh, okay. I will answer all of those, but we are going to take a short break for like ladies' rooms and things like that. Meet back in. I will answer those questions in. You guys think ten? Ten good enough? Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. Okie dokie. So, uh, yeah. You, anybody else? Here. Anybody else think this is like super sketchy? Oh yeah. <laughs> it's very sketchy. It's very sketchy. How will leaving like, society help change? Like I posted you for the in better. the better. Damn it. Like what I posted in the sketchy? chat, a woman with magically enhanced charisma that's starting a rally and is collecting a bunch of names. Yeah, that sounds really suspicious. <laughs> you know who likes to collect names? Better not Me? be that person. <laughs> that, that, that the chairs in Russia. Nothing about this seems aimed suspicious at all. It is a perfectly valid and a good opportunity to uh, get away from um, the uh, yokes of, of this oppressive society. Help, help, I'm being oppressed. Come see the violence inherent in the system. <laughs> no, no, River is not a violent system, but you know...
But yeah, somebody going around collecting names, that is, mm. on a magical basis, super serious. Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> okay, well, the, so what are the terms of our contract here? Because we were told to find her. Did, we, did he specify we had to bring her back? Or can we just I go, so. here she is. She's over yep, there. She, she, she's right there. She's getting on a boat. Have at. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not going to do that, but we could. So yeah, this will this will be interesting. The problem is that it's a tough one because like we could just sort of like like I was thinking this since the start, we could just sort of swoop in, pick her up, and carry her home, but that's not really going to solve things in the long term. True, but tempting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that that's also going to lead to a fight because River's right there with Abigail. No, what I mean is, if you're going for a drink or something like that, you go for a drink, then you just, you know, say, all right, so now you're coming with us. Everybody grabs her as five <laughs> people. <laughs> we, we, <do. laughs> we just go, yoink! <laughs> yep. <laughs> Just like this is a thing that we could do. It's not a thing that we should do, but it's a thing that we could well, do. There's, there's plenty of things we could do. Yeah. But just because you can doesn't mean you should. It's a favourite saying of mine. Mm -hmm. I mean, as you've probably seen so far, I'm much more on the sort of hand <laughs> approach. I want to try and coax her back rather than, well, uh, strong arm her back if you get it. <laughs> yeah. However, what with the magic that's going on here right now, coaxing her back is going to be quite difficult. Mm. Two GM points, just because I can. Yes, your contract does not say you have to bring her back. You just had to find her, technically. <laughs> Two, it may not even be all that much. Like we were talking about with um, River. River would be at kind of a disadvantage because she's already looking for that type of feel for a community within, right? You're talking about a young girl whose mother basically thinks that she's now so flawed that she can't even be married to anyone because of what she's become, right? Mm -hmm. So how much of it is magical and how much is just that sheer young person feeling like she's not wanted because of who she is? Little from column A, little from column B. Pretty much. Like I get sounds the like impression. Is... Sounds like I'm the only one who needed a break. <laughs> uh, so to answer your questions, um, they won't tell you the location because until you're there. And they say it's a safety thing. They don't want, like, the British government trying to pop up and then claim it for themselves or something like that. Um, there are some no, horses. No, when does that ever happen? <laughs> Sorry, what, Brad? I said, no, when does that ever happen? Yeah. Like, that's one of those, it's, again, it's one of these answers where part of you goes, well, that's 
sounds bad. And at the same time, you're like, uh, yeah, but that also makes sense. Because it's not like the British government does that all the time, right? Mm. Especially if you're already British citizens there, right? Um, so they won't give you the location. They say that they... The island itself is actually not a bad size. I would say Cuba-esque in size. It is definitely near the Americas in an island, which you can look at a map and there's not that. I mean, you can kind of probably narrow it down somewhat with that. They have several horses. They have some ox that they use for some of like the tilling and things like that. Um, I'm trying to remember what other questions there were. Uh, for um, as far Fauna as for and Fauna, weather. It's, it's a... a it's in the tropics. So you're going to have tropical plants. It's usually pretty warm. Um, like he even warns you that it can get really hot in summer. You, you probably will not be used to this amount of sunshine. Most of us aren't being Londoners, right? So they highly recommend at the beginning that you stay covered up, even though you would think you'd want to be less clothes, but you want to protect yourself from the sun so they suggest especially in the beginning when you're getting used to it that you stay covered up and that you wear a hat and that you um stay out of the worst part of the daylight heat like he comes off very concerned you know concerned you know for everyone's well-being um there is for some some... of the Victorian era, the sun was a myth. But that was it. That's why he's like, you're not going to be used to the sunlight. Like, he's very upfront about, like, you're not going to be. So, come on. So, I'm trying to remember what other questions there were. Uh, that was all of them. As far as most of the other, the animals, there's a lot of birds. There's a lot of reptiles. There isn't a lot of mammals. Some like smaller rodenty things. But since she's an explorer, I would say she probably figures that. If it's a tropical island, that sounds about right. Okay. Does she have any other questions for him? How much of the island is explored? Sorry, try that one more time. How much of the island is explored? And he, he kind of... I, I, chagrined would be probably the best way to explain it. He, he admits that probably only a quarter to a third of the island is totally explored. Um, they've sailed all the way around. There are no other colonies. There's nobody else building on it that they found. There doesn't seem to be any signs of natives. But he does admit that they've only got a quarter to a third of it fully explored. But it has been a couple of months since he was there last. So he expects at this point that they have it a bit better for him. But he doesn't want to mislead her into thinking without him having true knowledge of it. Yeah, and, and he'd see her let eyes light up at that, too. Um, if he sees that, then he'll smile and go, you wouldn't be interested in helping explore, would you? It has been what I've done mostly since my I left my family. And he, he actually seems to soften and asks if she doesn't mind the intrusion on her privacy, if she left her family because she wanted to or because, like many of us, she felt she had to. My parents passed 
with the same fever that changed me. And the family's business struggled with having enough in it. He looks, and I'm going to give this to you. This, it, it's not an act. He is very sincerely saddened by that. And says that he hopes that you consider joining them because it sounds like you deserve a new start and that you would be fantastic for the new civilization that they're starting. And he, he mentions that He's not sure which is better, his parents, if they had died, or the fact that his parents will never see him as anything but dead. He doesn't know which is a worse fate, having seen your parents die because of the fever or your parents basically declaring you dead to them because of it. And you can roll awareness or anything like that that you have or you can just take 10 on this because I'll tell you right now it, there's not an ounce of lie in what he just said his parents completely decided that he was dead to them hey, thank you for sharing the information and if the group's looking they, they would see her weaving her way towards uh, the troll, John. All right. Anybody doing anything? I know that there's some people talking with Abby. Abby is totally in line to sign up. Not a question in her mind that this is what she wants to do. She doesn't mind the idea of having a drink with you guys afterwards, but she is insistent that she wants to sign up because she doesn't want to miss this boat and have to wait for the next boat. When is the boat leaving? If, three days. Uh, in three days. She literally, because for whatever reason, I don't know, maybe that 19 on first impressions, seems to be rather trusting of you. Oh. She she might even let something slip about not having the money to wait for the next boat anyhow. A 14 on a conversation check to continue. Befriending her. Conversation skill. Yes. <laughs> Conversation is an awesome skill, actually. Yeah, no, she keeps chatting with you as she goes. You, I'm not going to stop saying... because it's three days away, and you can change someone's mind in three days. Um, that, that's very true. And I'm yeah. I... Oh, and she basically says something along the lines of, "Don't worry. If she changes her mind, it's not like anything ha bad happens." She just doesn't go on the boat, and somebody else gets her gets her spot. Famous last yes, words. Yes, indeed. I will. Uh... She then says that she met a guy who is in the line to sign up. Who something came up, and he missed the last boat. She met him at one of the previous meetings, and he had to wait for this boat, and it was you know a month, month and a half. Before, you know, the next boat leaving hat hit. Yeah. And, ah. you know, literally, she basically is like, she doesn't say it outright, but she implies heavily that she doesn't have the funds to make it a month, month and a half. Matter of fact, she's a little worried that they're not going to be interested in her because she doesn't feel like she has a lot of skills. You know, she's not a farmer. She doesn't know how to make the horse drag a plow. She doesn't know how to build anything. You know, she actually has some trepidation that they might reject her. Well, at this point, I'm probably going to make my way over to where Abigail is as well. I have a few questions and insights. Okay. So you'll so make I your way you over... I will introduce my friend to her since. I will remove my. Real quick, just whenever we get a spot where it might be relevant, 
since I'm isolated up on the roof and nobody's keeping an eye on me, I'll be. I figure I'll yep. be safe rolling an astral sight. And I got that in the, the chat, so. Just wanted, to, just wanted to make sure it was seen. Throw it in wherever it's appropriate no, for the scene. It's because reading is bad for me right now. Um, so no, thank you for pointing that out. Let me know what your astral role is. It, it's a thirteen. I got it in the chat. Thirteen. Um, after she quit speaking, speaking, she's not using anything, and there doesn't seem to be any, at least of those three, using magic. Um, you occasionally kind of in, in the general areas or anything going on around the crowd. Not as much as that would be like affecting the crowd. You will see that some of them are. For lack of better terms, adepts. Much like if you studied everybody's patterns, your whole group basically is. Some of them are magically active. They, they get, you know, mages and that sort of thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. But nobody seems to be doing anything that affects the crowd. Nobody seems to be even, like... Yeah. Which, if nothing else, your character probably is, like, that's not what you expect. I wouldn't think that that would be what he would expect. There's no obvious signs that this is a trap, is kind of what I'm going for. Yep, there are no obvious signs that this is a trap. There's nobody, you know, guarding or, you know, high-handed. There's nobody... There's nobody, um, obviously using magic after she gave her, you know, speech. Nothing like that. Um, River's character, are you getting in the line to sign up, or are you trying to get closer to where maybe on the side where you can talk to John? Uh... She, she's at the point where she's just going to, she's willing to sign up, and like if she gets a chance to talk to John, she will. So, do you want to go over towards where the rest of the group is with Abigail, or with the sort of line cutting, but not, you know what I mean, or go to like the end of the line and move forward? Um, uh, one second. She'd probably I mean, do the polite thing and go to the end of the line because she doesn't see all her friends out, out there, all okay. compatriots. Okay. Those of you with Abigail, um, because of conversation and first impression and all that, she's still pretty chatty. She sketches on some stuff. Like, she doesn't mention her last name. She doesn't say who what her father does. Just that... And she doesn't even really mention her dad. She she might mention that her mom believes that having change makes her tainted by the devil. Well, and that she doesn't think say. and she doesn't think anything she ever says or does is going to alter that or change it or make that somehow better. That that's just always going to be, and she's never going to be accepted. Well, anyways, I'll be introducing myself to Abigail. I will remove my top hat, put my cane under my arm, uh, and give her a sort of sweeping bow, and say, Miss, a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Waymont Cromwell of the East End Cromwells. He actually will curtsy... And if anybody outside of your group was paying attention, this isn't a I'm kind of bobbing because I don't really know. No, this is a practiced thought. I come from a wealthy class type of curtsy. And she actually says something about, oh, I believe I've met blah, 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 who's also from the East, which would be like a second cousin Half uncle, once removed type of thing. Yes, my second cousin, half uncle, once removed, I believe. 
It's something like that, yeah. Mm-hmm. And says that he's uh, quite the horseman. Yes, quite so. The family, well, when I had contact with my family, they were all Twitter about him. Sadly, oh. I have not really had much contact with the main branch of the family in quite some time. And she has that concerned, caring, I feel you look. They didn't take it well either, did they? They did not. And my... she actually puts her she puts her hand out as if like it's not quite a shake because as a lady she wouldn't be out like to shake your hand, but it would definitely be in that range of a female greeting a male, you know, putting her hand out so that you could, you know I guess technically you would kiss it, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. You Which just wasn't done with the... anybody else. But it's it's a, it's basically it's a sign of I feel you, like I, I get you. And she she says you're in the right place. This is going to be so good for us. Am I? I do wonder that myself. I have some concerns. Uh, perhaps you could... Perhaps you could explain a few things to me. I can try. I'm sure that I don't know nearly as much as Elizabeth and Robert, but I can try. Well, as someone who's been following this endeavor for quite some time, I, uh... I expect you know more than I do. I only heard about it a few days ago. This is ah. my second meeting. And how did you hear about it? Oh, I saw a flyer up. Ah. I actually mentioned the little pub you guys were in. Mm-hmm. I see, I see. And so this would be your first time in attendance? Second meeting. Ah, and how did the first meeting go? Bunch like this, but you couldn't sign up. They didn't have the papers with them. Mm-hmm. I see. Yes. Well, as part of he indicates himself and everyone else around all of this, um, I also ended up becoming magically active. <laughs> My family sent me away to a boarding school, okay, if, you, if you would believe it. More just to get me out of the hair, I think. Oh, I believe it. But I did learn a few if things. To a boarding school, they just pretend you don't exist anymore. Basically. Um, but, regardless, uh, I did learn a lot about magic. And someone collecting lots of names, that rings a few warning bells for me, magically speaking. He snorts. It's not very ladylike. It's not horrendous, like, oh my god. But it's it's not terrifyingly ladylike. Most of them can't write their names. Mm. Out of character knowledge, a lot of people wouldn't be able to. It's where, um, in the U.S., you get the term, make your mark. So people who can't write their names, that can't do a signature would make an X or a mark, and mm. that's where the term making your mark comes from. Mm. And even in England, I believe it was common practice that if you couldn't write, which a lot of these people can't read and write, just flat out, honestly, they can't, they would just make a mark on the paper. That's understandable, but mm. uh, I believe... So they don't have or... their name. Well, for an endeavor such as this, they'd need to know who is coming, Correct. Well, I mean, yeah, because if you're not on the list, oh, I see. They write down your name. Yes. But you don't write down your name. Correct. Now, um, from a from the standpoint of magic, it does not really matter if you write your name or they write your name. So long as it's your true name, your real name, that has power. And it's an awful lot of power to give to someone else. Well... Would it matter if it's your real name? How would they know? Like, if I told them my name was, I don't know, Samantha, and I came up and I said, I'm Samantha, I'm I, I'm booked for this ship, would they know? Hmm. Perhaps not. It might be an idea if you're signing up not to use your real name. Just a friendly piece of advice there. 
she seems absolutely on board with this. Like she has not thought of any of that. <laughs> Go figure the young didn't think. No. The other thing I was slightly concerned about was uh, I overheard you saying that there had been, what, five boats? I think that's what they've said, yeah. And no one has heard anything from the people who've gone there so far? Well, well I mean, they're still there. I mean, like, Elizabeth has, and Robert, and I'm sure John has. I, I haven't really talked to John, but... And... I've heard from other people who've heard from them, but oh, I see. The whole point is to go there and to stay there. Letters, and it's yes. Part of society, if you don't stay there and start it. I mean, that's true. They're not going to come back, of course. But I would imagine right. that some people have, like, sent letters home, for example. There might be people abroad for uh, who have families who are also pigeons, who um, would like to send a letter to the relatives, perhaps ask them to come and join them. I'm sure there are. I hadn't thought to ask. It would be a little concerning if we didn't get any correspondence at all from the island. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, the boat comes back, and if you had correspondence, you could send it on the boat back. Absolutely. And have you heard of anyone receiving such correspondence? Well, no, but I wouldn't think of anyone to ask, either. I mean, hmm. It's another question that might be worth asking before you step foot on the boat, I imagine. That's a good question. When I get up there, my name will be Samantha. And she kind of, like, not like quite winks at you, but kind of. And I'll ask if they know of anybody. That's a good hmm. idea. Yes, quite wise, quite wise. The issue, I feel, is that uh, you need, if you're going to change your life in such a dramatic manner, you need to be absolutely certain that where you're going is going to be better than where you left. And she nods. By the way, out of character, you now understand why the boarding school old guy was so protective of her. Mm -hmm. I would think. If you haven't, like, Oh, that's why he's protective of her. <laughs> yeah. She kind of needs it. So, um, my understanding was that you want to get on the next boat. Is that correct? Yep, leaves in three days. Mm. Have you said goodbye to your family? Because you know you will never see them again. And she looks at him, and it's it's probably the hardest or the closest to a hard look that she's given since you guys have really met her. There's no point in that. Mm. And of all people, you should understand why there's no point in that. No, I do understand where you're coming from. And it is difficult. And I will, sh I will shake my head. I'm doing them, I'm doing them a favor. That should be enough. Mm. But if they don't know where you've gone, they will worry ever so. No, they won't. My mother it? doesn't worry about anything anymore. Well. She gives kind what. of a sigh, and it's, it's, it's an angry, frustrated type of sigh. She's too medicated to worry about anything. Well, I'll tell you what, once this meeting is over, there's no need to jump to any decisions just yet. There still will be time within the next two days. Um, why don't we go and have a talk about this? Well, I'm going for a drink with your friends after the rally. Ah, perfect, perfect. Yes, that's, that is an excellent choice. <laughs> I, I really think it's, it's the kind of life-changing decision that you should probably talk over with someone else first. Even if it's just someone like me. <laughs> okay. So about this point, you guys have made it up in line, and she signs. She does sign Samantha, and then some made-up last name, like Fieldman or Smith. 
Anybody do anything I should know of before I move on to River is going to go up and start mm-hmm. signing or at least get up to there to ask questions. Morgana will sign, but again, we'll pick a, we'll pick up a fake net. We'll not sign with her own name. Okay. So you sign, she signs with a different name too. And then you guys kind of move out of the way. You might notice at this point that about three, four, five people after you, River's up there. River, do you ask any questions before you sign? Is this a lottery? Uh, is it you You first come, first serve? Are you asking about skills? Conducting interviews? It's first come, first serve. And everybody has a skill. Sometimes you just got to find it. I mean... Everyone's expected to put in their fair share. Can't just lollygag. But everybody has a skill. You look like a resourceful young person. Yep, and she'll mark down river and then a dash explorer. When he sees the dash explorer, he smiles and goes... Did you know that we're still trying to, you know, to look through the rest of the island? Robert may have mentioned that. Ah, he's a good man. You're going to be a great asset. Welcome on board. And he puts his hand out to shake your hand. And my hand is completely dwarfed. Oh, my yes. John's a big man. Troll. He's a big troll. Anybody, anything else? I flip the table. <laughs> there isn't a table, there's a box. Oh. Shut up, peanut gallery. <laughs> All right. So the rally wraps up. There's a few more people who sign. There's some obvious disappointment shortly after River. Most of the people get told that the boat is now booked, but if someone doesn't show, if they're there and they're ready, they'll go down the list. So, those of you going, are you going to go to the same pub you were at earlier? Are you going to go to a different pub with I Abigail? Mean, I think that there would be wisdom in not going to the pub that had most of the people doing the rally in it. Yes. Yeah. And this is British. This is this is a British town in the 1800s. There's a pub on every corner. Um, yeah, there's there literally there's a bunch of pubs. Like it's not hard to find one. This is a British area by the docks in 1800. There's probably a pub every 10 feet. <laughs> not quite, but it, there there are plenty of places you could. Fairly yes, easily but... go. Most of them are going to one. We'll go to this other one. That's not hard. Of... We have several nice looking young ladies going to pubs next to the docks. It's just a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> Unless we're trying to buy a little bit of easy there, there um... some risk In that, yes. I will say, being in a fairly large group of, you know, five, six of you. Seven, if um, Brad's character rejoins. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm going to have to is, find a spot where there's not anybody really watching and climb back down. And I don't know how I'm going to get this rope down. <laughs> so, I'll, go, so, I'll go back for it. Okay. I'll, then I'll do my best to just kind of chuck the end of it up, back up on the roof since you were able to climb up there without it. Just so that it's not left okay. dangling. Just, 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 you know, like, tug it. Tug it hard. Use your arms, Wimpy. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if it was yeah, able to hold my entire body off, weight climbing up, how does me tugging on it going to pull it off? You just have to, like, flick it. You flick it with your with your hands. You can make some kind of rope. Is it, is it, is it, is it, is it is elven rope? It belongs to an elf. 
Okay, okay that's not going to go, is it? No, right, fine. <laughs> Just because we watched Lord of the Rings last night. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, and you can watch, Nigel can watch to get an idea of which one they're going to, so that way when he climbs down, he knows where to head. Uh, so, yeah, I figured basically, what... you'll have the general direction they're going, and, you know, you'll just kind of look in and spot them. Well, I just kind of figured gonna whenever I can manage to get a spot where nobody's really looking my way and I can climb down safely, I'll just kind of walk towards whatever street entrance we came in at and just kind of hang around the corner so I can just catch them on the way out. Okay. So, the rest of you aren't surprised to find Nigel. Abigail has an untrusting look of the human hanging out on the corner. I will I, I will introduce him as a friend who was here because yes. we're all of them. A cynical outlook for life. We were we wanted to be careful about coming to a meeting like this. He's something of an engineer, I hear. She probably is like, oh, that sounds wise, because you guys sound wise. So you guys go and you find a place, you sit down, everybody gets a pint. Abigail makes little faces as she takes sips of it, as if um, ale is not something she's used to drinking, let alone ale that's found three blocks from the dock. You don't have to drink it if you don't want to, you know. No, I, I'm trying to get used to it. It seems that that's what most, I mean, other than tea... Kind of what everyone here drinks. I'm quite and partial I, I, to both. All the gin in these establishments is much worse than the ale. Well, anyway, now that we're away from the rally, uh, did you receive a card earlier? No. Well, allow me to give you one, and with a small sleight of hand, I will produce a card. And slide it over to her. When she looks at it, she frowns. No. I'm not going to push you to do anything that you don't want to do. I'm going to say that up front. Because I believe that you're an intelligent young woman and you can make your own decisions. And I will lean back. However, the reality of the matter is that while I did attend the event uh, out of curiosity as much as anything, it did give me some concerns. And that's why I'm going to continue and tell you about this. And I'll tap the card. Well, this well would be... she has bristled. Like, she is rigid, straight, like, if you were at the, when you were at the boarding school and you did not have your posture correct and you got hit with a ruler, rigid, straight, her lips are pursed. They, she, she has, her eyes have narrowed. No. As soon as the card showed up, she has just bristled. I want to ask you, before we start, why do you think we're here? Well, the only person who might want to find me would be my father. Why? Because I'm his daughter, and he has a duty to make sure of that I haven't sullied the family name any more than I currently have. Right, but you said that your father didn't really care about you at all. You think that this proves he does? I don't think that it, it proves he does. It's about the family name. Hmm. I mean, how yeah. would it look to all of his rich patrons if his demon-touched daughter was off at the docks? Well, to be honest, well, as someone who comes from... With... Yeah. Go ahead. We met with your father. I do not think you are entirely wrong that some of his concerns 
are that of a father worried about his father's reputation, but there was a lot more that he he tried to hide because of the sort of man he is of a father simply being worried about his daughter and where she was. A father who He's... was only concerned with his reputation would be glad to have his demon-touched daughter gone and would simply tell his rich friends that she was off to a boarding school or sent somewhere else away and not you know, something that wouldn't raise any questions. That he's off looking board. for you like, to ensure your safety shows that he has like, concerns beyond that. Off to a boarding school, my dad, like me. My family sent me to a boarding school because they wanted nothing at all to do with me. My mother wants me sent to a nunnery. Your mother, unfortunately, is addled by the narcotics she's being fed. That's what I said, and he told me I didn't need... He said I didn't know what my mother needed, and I wasn't a doctor, and that I should know my place. Would you like to be a doctor? Well, she blinks at that. Like, this is completely left field for her. I'm not saying I you should know. be, but I don't. I don't know. I know I don't want to be a nun, and I know that... I don't want to be a disappointment. I'm going to say I this. I don't want to be the family shame. I'm going to say this just now. I don't believe, uh, as someone who's spoken with your father, I don't believe that your father is ashamed of you. I think he puts up a front. I think he is a brusque man if nothing else. Very business-minded. Likes to hide his emotions. But I don't believe he is ashamed of you. If he were, then you would not be in his presence at all, ever. Because that's the kind of man he is with the capabilities he has. There's a little bit of, I don't want to call it defeat, but like a slump in her shoulders. Because what you're saying is, is true and she knows it on some level. <laughs> Um, Morgana yeah, will you, take you a hand in a comforting in this. Go ahead. Uh, Morgana is going to take her hand in a friendly, comforting manner, given a, a young lady who's of a similar age to her. You can still choose your own life. You don't need to run off to some island that may or... Well, it sounds a wonderful idea in... As an idea, in practice, it may be something, it may just be an unpleasant life, if it may be something far more sinister. The problem is but that it's a gamble. Life even, even, even if he's not so ashamed of me, that he wants nothing to do with me. I can't be a doctor. He's not Why going not? to pay for me to go to medical school. Proper ladies don't get educations like that. We get married. Times of which, are... I'm not so maritable anymore. Times, Times are changing, yes. Uh, there, are ma there are many women now who are doctors. I mean, you've heard about that woman who created the... What was it again? The uh, Help me out here, Nigel. You're the engineer. Which are you thinking of? Uh, the... That computer machine. Oh, uh... Oh, nice. You're speaking of uh, Lady Lovelace. Yes, yes, Lady Lovelace, that's right. She's a doctor. There are a ladies serving as officers in Her Majesty's Army. Yes. For Christ's sake, we're ruled by a woman. I believe there is also a lady doctor who is also a Bujan. She is an elf. And it is written into the law that, la that uh, you can have female high street chemists. So there are you practicing can, but women out, in that field. But my father won't pay for it. Your father may so be Either they're ladies and who have access to money and leisure, and they're already ladies. But remember, I'm not a lady. They were hoping to marry me to someone so I would be a lady and elevate the family name. Mm. Well... 
As I said before, I'm not looking to force you into anything you don't want to do. The only thing I am asking you is that before you decide to take that gamble, step onto that boat, and consign yourself to a different life in God knows where, you speak with your father first. Find out how he really feels. If he feels as you think he feels, then do what you must. And if the matter is one of funding, Rolling I may be able to help you find a patron. That piques her curiosity. However, her eyes settle on River. You signed. You're going to, right? Actually, it is an, it's a place to explore and find yourself and, and be with others that are like you without having to uh, worry about uh, the hatred and, and the, uh, um, what's the, the distrust, the, yes, the evil exactly. look. <laughs> Uh, River's words made uh, way want rubs the bridge of his nose. <laughs> yes, it may be, but I've got a very, very bad feeling about the whole organization. You're not wrong. But if we so... all leave, and if we all leave, we'll be out of sight and out of mind, and they can stop worrying about us. We won't be able to change anything or improve the world if we all just disappear. The idea in concept has some merit, but in practice, one does need to consider, number one, who's funding this? Why would Wait. they be holding meetings in secret? Uh, obviously, some degree for protection, but if this was... You know, but there's not was, that much secret. I mean, I found out on a flyer. But you know, have, holding meetings at the docks? Yes. There are more respectable oh, places to hold than that. But who's paying for it, and will they let a whole bunch of us in? Well, that's the point. Who's paying for it in general? You've got someone who has at least one large ship with the resources and supplies to host a large number of people on what is probably, given it's the tropics, uh, weeks and weeks of voyaging. They, they said to expect at least three. Maybe four if the weather's bad. Right. Between three weeks, weeks and a month of voyaging, that's a lot of food, which costs a lot of money. Given And as well as that, you have the upkeep of the, sh of the ship, the amount that you have to pay for the crew. Uh, you'll have to forgive me. I was uh, in a previous life. I was an account. I, I did some accounting. But uh... Yes, but if the crew is, is supplied by people that are pulling their weight, within the community, you don't have to pay them. How many of those people on the docks do you think were sailors? How many of those people on the docks do you think knew the first thing well, about... we can learn. While you're on the ship. I mean, I don't have any really... I, I don't have any good skills. But I, I, I can learn. They could learn. What I'm saying is that there has to be someone to teach them. There has to be a crew that uh, would staff the ship essentially and give people jobs to do there would have maybe, to be someone maybe this lady loveless or whatever uh, out of character elvin bujum that is a you know has become of note as a doctor maybe they're helping fund it maybe there's some others i mean but... And I, I will hold up my hands at this. She has not thought of any of this, by the way. The, the, the yeah, point is that these things need to be questioned to determine the legitimacy. Without the yes. answer to those questions, it is a gamble. Mm -hmm. And not just a gamble, may I add, it is a bad gamble. Because if you know nothing, then the risk of someone being able to take advantage of you is quite high. There's also the matter of if things do not work out, do you have an option to get back? Do you have an option to return? Can you get out of the situation 
if you're shipped off to an island somewhere with no contact to anybody around, that you have no options. You are trapped. Well, you can always work a, a return trip on on the ship after you learn learn the skills in the first month. Assuming they would allow you to leave. Uh, yes. Do you really think they're going to let Even... you leave? Sorry, go ahead. Brother, you're a gentle soul and I appreciate your presence, but uh, the thing is, this is a really bad idea. So... Abigail will say, but return to what? I I can't afford to stay at the boarding house if I don't find work. I have no skills. Do, do you know what ladies do when they have no skills? And she has this very shocked, petrified kind of look to her right now. I'm going to take both her hands and look her in the eyes and go, Abigail? As I'm sure you have surmised, we have talked to both of your parents. We have talked to your family and we've been looking for you. This offer is nothing to do with that. This offer is to do with the impressions I have of you as a person. But I am told that you have an excellent singing voice, you have musical skills, you know botany well. I'm sure you have a good hand. And I doubt anyone has ever tested you to see if you're magically active. And I could... There's a test? <laughs> That's literally her question. There's a test? Apparently. <laughs> I'll smile. Um, I'm a young lady, much like yourself, though I think blessed as being born in a higher station. I am seeking to make a life for myself. However... I have certain responsibilities while I'm here to look at after some of the family holdings and that sort of thing. I could do with someone to help me with that while I'm off filing gallivanting, um, as my mother would put. <laughs> Let's charitably say investigating. I don't want to limit myself. I sure my mother would be much happier knowing that I have a good, intelligent young lady acting as a secretary and companion to me, making sure that all the things I am no doubt forgetting that need doing, need doing. And I'm sure, given what I saw of your, uh, your, your, of your family home, you have been taking up a lot of the slack for your mother in the oh, house. Hi. You probably that know more about running a house than I do. That almost sounds like a job offer. Well, that's so now she has. Is a job. Keep in mind, it's actually two different offers. So there's a job offer, but there's also the offer of a patron that's been put up. Mm -hmm. And right. And then when you decide what you want to do, I would be. Well, as your employer, it would be, and and hopefully as a friend, it would be right for me to help you pursue those goals. And better yourself. And I could help and you with both. She's going to look back at um, which character was it that about finding a patron? Was it yours? It was Mayor's game. So, yeah. She'll look back over there and be like, and, and if I wanted to go to school, you think I could truly find I, a patron? I could help. I would help make sure that you would get what needing funding is. And I know other people, other ladies from a range of society who seek, well, to help young ladies and old ladies, in fact, better themselves in this world. And their meetings are not in the docks. They're much nicer places. And I can point to who's funding those. <laughs> She'll she'll say something in a in a fairly quiet voice that you could almost not hear if you weren't also very focused on the conversation. My only option ever has to be a wife. Your what a world to have other options. 
yes, it's taking us some of the men a little while to realise that we have other options, but um, I can teach you the places to kick those th 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 those idiots um, if they try and get in your way. Very painful. And I'd it, do it if I were you. If I were you. And if if six months down the line, a year down the line, this this island of Bujums is not just some. If our cynicism is wrong, and it is a good thing, we can both visit there together. It is true. Perhaps we are wrong, and perhaps it is a totally legitimate enterprise. But it is still far too early to say. Still look back at River. Because River seems to be her ally at the moment. What do you think? This opportunity aligns with uh, goals that I, I have. I want to build a self-sufficient community and of Bujums and others that are out, outcast from society. It, it seems like a good opportunity to me. Are you still going to go? It would be uh, safer if I if I had a friend, if if I went with a friend. Which sadly falls again upon her naivety. She just met you all. Right? <laughs> River, once again, I I do believe it would be a much safer option to see how this pans out first. If we go, we can uh, and make sure that it is, is safe for everyone, and and build it and make it a, make it what you believe it's not. If, if, and I'm going to stress this, if it exists at all. I have enough information that I I could probably find it on the maps, but you know, up for you, Abigail. I would be able to uh, travel with you to it, but I, as soon as I get there, I'm probably going to go inland and help map and chronicle the flora, the fauna, the and uh, well, the maybe I, I could do that too. I'm gonna. I, I'm I gonna could run learn. Can, can I draw very well, well actually. Consider that we are draw... part of an investigative agency. We can look into the matter, assuming our, our contracts take us that direction, which, given what we're stumbling on, I have a feeling they might. There's no reason to rush into the, the situation. We can look into it to confirm if it's legitimate or not. I'm yes. I'm not going to be able to do this, though. It's going to take a lot longer than that. It will take time, but again, there's no reason, if you even decide to go, there's no reason to rush into the decision right now. Take yes. the time to look into it. Be but, but I don't. I mean, I may be, maybe I do now, but I didn't think I did. Wow. I, I, I can't afford the boarding house. I mean, Lenny's very sweet, but he can't let me stay there without paying forever. Yes. What makes me most suspicious about this whole thing is that they are praying praying may be the wrong word but it seems like they are targeting the most desperate Buja, or, or among us of the Bujams amongst us no praying those like yourself word. yes praying would be absolutely the right word hold on i couldn't hear um i couldn't hear bex Sorry, go ahead. I thought I thought she was saying something. I was saying that no, praying is the right word. At about the same time as um <laughs> I was actually agreeing with you. Somebody else, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, uh... it sounds too like the sort of <laughs> Lurid, petty, dreadful nonsense my brother used to 
send me about the, the so-called white slave trade. I rather hated those letters. In, in general, young miss, I think you have been quite sheltered from some of the po possibilities of the world. And some of this may be a result of your upbringing, some of it may be a result of simply the family you happen to have been born into. As we've said, we've met your parents, your mother in particular, so we are familiar with the outlooks you've dealt with. But as you can see by myself and the compatriots that I work with, not all of, not everyone shares those same views. There and... are there is a wealth of other opportunities. There is a wealth of other possibilities that exist within the world. I think perhaps you've maybe jumped on the first one that sounded good, but there may be other things to look into. And well, we are saying this. Be aware that this is not any kind of slate on your intelligence. As I've said before, I believe you to be a very intelligent young lady, very more than capable of making your own decisions. However, what I'm trying to have you do, and what we are trying to have you do, is make an informed decision. And that goes doubly for you, River. <laughs> Okay. She just kind of sighs. It's a soft little sigh type of thing. I have a lot to think about, I think. I think I'm going to go back to my room. And and as she gets up, she stops and goes, Oh, would any of you walk me back? Lenny says that after dark I shouldn't walk alone. Absolutely. I I think of the entirety course. of our group would be willing to escort you, Miss. Yeah. And, and she gives a kind of small curtsy, acknowledging and thanking. And she's, I don't want to say sullen, but she's she's very lost in her thoughts on the way back. I will, when we arrive at the boarding house, give her one of my own calling cards. Because I have them. I bought them on my equipment list and everything. Um, but that's a <laughs> for calling on me in a personal matter. Right. So she'll take the card and say thank you. No, we will be in the area for the next day, for the next few days. If you wish to see us, we will be at that establishment over there, and I will point my key in the direction of the pub in the morning. And you can talk with us then if you have any thoughts. And and she'll nod. She's nowhere near as chipper and gung ho. I don't want to. It's not that she's sad. It's that you guys have just technically opened up an entire universe that she didn't think was a possibility. Like literally, her thought pattern was. A arranged marriage at best, you know, staying in the home where her mother thinks she's touched by the devil, or going on the ship. Those those are the options she saw. Now she has she just has a lot to think about. So it's not that she's trying to be impolite; it's that she's just very lost in what if land. It's understandable. And I will say of character that now that we know that she has left and gone back to room, would somebody please smack River with an old rolled up newspaper? <laughs> <laughs> this is where I now step out because she's there and you all get to deal with River. Whether that involves a rolled up newspaper or not is up to you. He made some very the Elizabeth made very valid points. She you know, and Robert had great information about the place. Uh, the only the only reason why it's not disclosed where it is is because certain uh, factions would try to claim it for their own and continue all of this where the where we are trying to go. Forever, if you want to get on that boat, yeah, it's just appeared As out of nowhere. I, I know that's probably not entirely implausible these days but really and what's their agenda 
to get away from um, people that would have us dead or second class citizens. That is almost yeah, never the only agenda. agenda. Sorry, everyone was talking over each other. I was saying to get all of us pointy eared types out of the way. Sorry, I think we're all eager to try and talk you out of this madness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, and it's going to be rough because it? like a, it's a stated goal for her. So, I am aware, as you have said, that it is your goal to go and explore some far off land. However, you are currently in a paid position as an investigator, and you therefore have the time. To wait and see if this is legitimate. That is a fair thing, no? It's quite fair, but uh, we, I only accepted the contract to find I, I Abigail. She has been found. <sighs> I believe it's the contract was to return her to her father, and we're not doing that just yet. Or we'll find I... her and provide information to her of where she's to her father. All, all, all I remember is that uh, we were uh, requested to find, find Abigail in whatever state she is in. She aside, has been found. Aside from this contract, still consider it for yourself as a matter of safety. Yes. I want you to think about this. On the one hand, you have uh, going to a foreign island and exploring as you wish. On the other hand, you have some group that's perhaps doing nefarious things in the background that you have no idea about. And if you do step aboard that ship, there may be no coming back. In any kind of sense. I want you to consider those two things carefully and consider what the likelihood of each one is. So you're saying, if, if I can help you prove that uh, this is legitimate and nothing shady, we'll, we'll all go oh, and it, uh, help uh, form the, this community on the island? Well, as yeah. I said, my main modus operandi is to change society from the inside. It is important to normalize the presence of Bushams, in my opinion. However, if that is your stated goal, and if this business is legitimate, then I would have no problem with you stepping aboard the ship and going and searching for your dreams in the tropics. Okay. That, that seems like a reasonable deal. Very well, then. But I don't know if we're going to be able to prove this or disprove this in three days. No, I think it will take considerably longer than that to get to the bottom of what's going on here. Lovely idea, and I hope it is the truth and that my, all of our cynicism is completely misguided, but... There is nothing wrong with the dose of oh, the skepticism. My brother, he eventually returned to where he got himself to, would be happy enough to invest in the island. He's he's an elf like me, and, well, Caribbean, you can grow coffee and stuff, right? They need trade partners. No, it is getting quite late, and I think it would be wise for us all to return to our abodes for the evening. Um, Might I suggest that, as I said to the young lady, we meet up here at the pub there in the morning? That sounds an excellent idea. Splendid idea. Breakfast Very well, then. All right. Anybody do anything overnight that I should know about? Otherwise, I believe we cut scene to in the morning at the pub. Sounds fair. Sounds mm -hmm. fair. 
sounds like an idea. Um, I think probably a good idea in the morning uh, that we should at least send word to her father. We have located her. Additional details will follow. Not necessarily have to tell her where tell him where I'll, she's I'll at see. right now, but at least let him know we have found her. She is safe. How are you going go to go into Telegram? Positively, <laughs> so, uh, rather than the phone. You can like send it, a note with a messenger. Yeah, we can send it, send a messenger to, to leave a note with the butler, <clears> or if, uh, you know, you can ring his office and let him know. I, I, I probably, you know, just sending a messenger would probably be the easiest. Probably right. Yeah. But and you can like, send it to his office. Well, would he be in it? Because tomorrow's might... Sunday. Would he be in his office on Sunday? No. No, he probably won't be at the office on Sunday. So, yes, yeah, so to the house. So I him. forgot what it was. So, you guys all in agreement to a note that says you found her, but doesn't give, like, where she's at? Something along the lines of, we found her, she's it, safe. We, we found her, we've spoken with her, she is safe, additional details to follow. Yep. Take the weight off his mind. She's not dead. Yeah, she's not dead. So it sounds like, yes. Okay. So you guys send the note off. Um, so you guys are all there. Abigail does show up late morning, almost to lunchtime. And she comes over and she sits down. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you feeling? Well, to be honest, I didn't sleep very much. And I had a long talk with Lenny this morning. Hmm. What was his take on all this? Well, apparently I didn't get your card because I hadn't seen him last night before I went out to eat and go to the rally. But he said you came by. He doesn't really trust you. However, he said you brought up a lot of very good points. And that I should think about that I have other options. It will it's admit, always good to have uh, options. Options are always good, and I, I must admit, I'd, I'd, I'd assumed the worst when we arrived at the boarding house. Terribly remiss of me, I'll admit. Mm. I'll, yes. From what Lenny says, I'm very lucky that I found Lenny's house first. Well, we and she, actually, just... she, she kind of smells like she's kind of fond of the little old guy already. Well, we are just glad that we found you well. Yeah. L Lenny says that I'm not in the right place for someone like me. And he doesn't mean, and she kind of motions at her ears. He doesn't mean that. He just, he thinks it's a little too rough oh. of an area for me. Yes. It is a little bit, I suppose. So. You can be anywhere you want to be, but you have to learn how to look after yourself, I think. Hmm. Have you come to a decision, or uh, still thinking about it? Well, after talking with Lenny and thinking about what you said, I think you're right, and I should give Father a chance. Capital. However, even if even if he does care about me, I don't want to just be married off. That's understandable. And if, if, if that's all he sees for my future, I'm not staying there. Mm. 
And then I have to decide whether I get on the boat or I, 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 I maybe try being your housekeeper and companion until I can figure out what I want to study. And she sounds, she sounds a lot younger, but in some respects, really, it's not a lot younger. She's a fairly sheltered 15 year old. I was thinking, 15, 16 year old, and, and she sounds like a very sheltered 15, 16 year old. Because in all truth, she doesn't know you people from anything. And now she's talking about going to your house and, you know, right? I was thinking more secretary and companion than housekeeper, but, you know. <laughs> well, yes. I think that. Oh, good. Then I could say living with Lenny, right? It would be a little bit of a hike, and I'm sure I have rooms in the house, but if, if you wish to stay with Lenny's, that I suppose would be reasonable. Well, in any I, case, I, I it's good to keep your secretary. options open, and uh, I think that... I've played on a typewriter. <sighs> or type thing, whatever they would call it. But, but I think you're right, and I should give Father a chance first. Very wise of you. Very wise. Lenny says that sometimes parents don't always say the right things at the right time. I think that is somewhat true with people in general, but parents, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, quite so. I've had enough arguments with my mother over the last year. If my own parents cared about me as much as your father care, appears to care about you, then we probably wouldn't be sitting here speaking now. Speaking of, would you be prepared to meet with him? Now? Like right now? We could arrange a meeting. It wouldn't have to be necessarily be at your home or something like that. You could meet with him in public. We could be there if you wanted us to be. She nods at that. When would you I mean, like I guess I have to do it soon. The boat leaves in two more days, so I, I have to, I have to decide soon, right? This makes sense. Do you want us dinner? to? Yeah. Ah, or dinner. now? Dinner. Well, and you'll be there if you want us to be. Certainly. Yes, exactly. Okay, I can, I can do this. Right. And she doesn't seem afraid of her father as much as it is kind of the wrath of parents when you scare the fuck out of them. You know, you never know if they're going to be mad that you scare the fuck out of them or happy that you're not dead. You know, it's one of those. It can be both. I it can be both. I think what I will do is I will give your father a call. And perhaps arrange a meeting for tonight. Dinner, yes? Dinner. Okay. Very well. And she'll get up and she heads back over to the boarding house. Of course, we'll go to arrange where the dinner's going to be at and all that, but... <laughs> So you guys contact the father and set up a meeting? Yep, for tonight, for dinner. Where at? That's an excellent question. Well, we, yeah, I'll need to be some... Yeah, so we'll, we'll probably discuss that with her before she heads off. Um, would she want to do it at the pub here? This seems to be a safe neighborhood, and if he was going to start raising a ruckus, it seems like it would be an easy place to gather other allies. Well, actually, it seems to be a bit of a rough neighborhood, but you are right in the second part. Well, but for, for <laughs> her, I mean... It's a rough neighborhood. It, it, she's been here for or, a few days. She's fairly comfortable. Or if she'd and rather go Franklin, somewhere a bit further from where she's staying right now. Uh, you know, up to her. I think she'd be fine with this area. I will say this. With what you've seen of the father, a public ruckus is not something he would be prone for. 
Well, and that's what I'm thinking is, you know, if we've got it somewhere in a public area, that'll kind of keep him damped out yeah. if he was going to start yeah. trouble. If he, if, he, if he was going to cause a ruckus, he'd have an aneurysm and his brain would pop. Not in his character. Right. <laughs> he, he would just have her drug back. <laughs> and at no point did he say and then drag her back by her hair type of thing. Yeah. yeah. So, like I said, it, he's he's not the type to cause a public scene. But regardless, we're letting her set the terms. Which is also interesting for her. She's not used to setting the terms. So, she'll agree to the pub right there and dinner. Because then she doesn't have to worry about how she's getting there. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys would get her wherever, but this works out well for her. So, anybody doing anything other than contacting him about the arrangements? Something on the side that's bothering me that I'm not going to vocalize to anyone, uh, but real quick I wanted to ask, River, did you say that you signed using your real name? She signed use the na using the name that she gives everyone. Okay. Still bothering me. I'm going to try to find a spot where nobody's really keeping an eye on me, and I'm going to astral sight both Abigail and River. I want to see if there's okay. any lingering effect from either of them after signing the papers. Um, Morgana signed as well, also, but with a fake name. So mm. You can check me. And uh, Abigail I, I'm also not... signed with a fake. Well, well, Abigail and, also and signed with a fake name. At my the two of them. Right. Okay. Do you need me to roll so, separate separate astral sites for both of them, or just one for the two of them? Let's do separate. Okay. Uh, I will roll for Abigail first. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to throw Karma on that, so that's an 11. Okay. And then for River, it's a roll up. I'm going to throw Karma. Oh, wait. I grabbed the wrong Karma die on the first one. Okay, so the same result for the first one. Still an 11. And then for River, I'm going to throw Karma on this as well. Uh, that puts me to 16. Okay. So, with Abigail, you don't see any lingering effects. However, she is definitely, whether she realizes it or not, which she doesn't, she definitely has potential in that she would be an adept in her thought. She's very much like the rest of you guys. Interesting, okay. She just doesn't know it. Um, as far as River goes, you don't see any lingering, but she's also obviously more interesting and more than a normal just, I have no magical abilities. Right. Well, well, we know she's talking to animals, so yeah. <laughs> so we know there's that but effect, but but no, but nothing out of the ordinary as far as you know a, anything linking to her name or going on for some nope. sort of magical effect or anything for that. Nope. No. No trails. No weird blemishes in their patterns. Okay. Nothing that makes you that that says, "Oh, they tied to you somehow." Got it. Okay. That and that's what I was looking for. Yep. So, and again, I have not vocalized this to anyone, so if anybody wants their own investigation, go ahead. But I'm keeping that to myself. Perfectly valid. Anybody else? Well, the problem is that whilst I would like to investigate this, uh, these, this business that's apparently taking people abroad, um, I don't really know where to start. Ooh. I think Spoiler. that would be one to address with our employer after we complete the contract with this meeting. Yes. Okay, anything else happening that I should know of, note, before the evening meeting happens? Brad, I, I will point out there's a reason why I say the name she gives everyone. She's already thought about name powers of name. 
Mm-hmm. Well, well, and that's, and I'm glad you put it that way because, yeah, that's what I was thinking. So it it, it is your true name. It is the name you call yourself. Oh no! Oh no! It's not the name she calls herself. It is the name she gives everyone. Yeah. Okay. So that means if there was any magical jiggery pokery going on, then uh, we wouldn't be able to see it in either of them. At least not that you. you... If you ask his character, or his character tells you. If he tells you, I don't know that he will. He didn't see anything. All right, uh, hearing nothing it, else. Basically, nothing tying to anybody's true name, so we're, we're we're okay. So nothing else. Nope. We're gonna go ahead and jump to that evening. Mm-hmm. Seems like. <laughs> I think we'll yeah. probably, when we invite her father, unless we want to cover anything with that interaction, we'll probably go over to his house and let him know the arrangements for the meeting. Yeah, tell okay. him in person. Okay. Okay, you guys are going to do it in person? Awesome. So you guys go to the house. At this point, the, the butler and the little bit of staff that you see are much more... nice to you <laughs> it's not the who are you why are you here it's the and type of you know waiting to hear what's happened to abigail you guys are pretty quickly ushered into his study change something stronger whatever you want And you guys have all known for him probably the most impolite thing you've seen him do. Like, he doesn't hardly wait for you guys to be finished being served or anything like that. He's just, tell me about my daughter. Right. Well. she First off, your daughter is alive and well. And she's eager to see you tonight to speak with you. It was... She has been wrapped up in... Something rather apolitical. Well, basically, there is there was some sort of rally down in the docks where they said that they were going to transport Bujums uh, across the water to some sort of tropical island where they would establish a new community. But uh, we convinced your daughter that the legitimacy of such an operation is easily called into question. And therefore, we have convinced her to speak with you tonight. And his brow kind of pure, kind of burrows a bit, and he's just like, speak with me. She just needs to come home. I'm what is she thinking? That. Going to some tropical island. The, you would the, send her the off to some of this speaks very highly of the fact that she just needs to come home. What she's thinking, or what she was thinking, rather, before we convinced her otherwise, is that you don't care about her, and that you want All to send that. her off to a nunnery or something. I know her mother has spoken of a nunnery, but but of course not. We're going to find a fine match for her. Yes, that's, that's the other Does thing that, that she's much? worried about. Um, she's Bex, neither interested in a nunnery want... nor in being married off. So I want to make sure that Bex was hurt. Sorry again? Okay I, I, okay. I thought I heard her say something. I want to make sure. 
One more time. Did you want to say something? Oh, maybe I just heard, heard it and it wasn't there. Sorry. It might just be feedback, too. Yeah. And, and nothing being posted in the chat. Okay. And, right. and Brad's character, Nigel, joined in with that's it doesn't want to be married off either. Correct. And he just frowns as if that's the most, like, you could have just told him that she bought a pet orangutan. Like, what do you mean she doesn't want to get married? Of course she does. No. No, she does not. And it's not necessarily she want that she to get married, to get married, but she doesn't want to be part of an arranged marriage. She wants to forge her own path. That's ridiculous. Why? Be because... Because we've raised her to be a lady, I I'm in a position where I can find a suitable suit her, and she'll be a la a fine lady, and a, a wonderful wife, and I I believe she'd even make a good mother. You, I, she's she's been training for this her entire life. This is this is what women do. Dear sir. We have come to the turn of the century, and things have changed quite a bit since then. It is... It Sir, is these... you just said my daughter thought about going to a tropical island. Do you I'm honestly aware. think that she should have any say in such matters? She obviously mm. needs a husband. No, she needs an education, a chance to make her own intelligent decisions. When we gave her the facts, she thought about them for herself and thought about them intelligently and rationally. You should be proud of her. She wasn't intelligent and she, she is educated. She can play at least three instruments. She can draw and paint. She, she's got a fine voice. Uh, she can manage household accounts. If she chooses to, and when she finds someone she wishes to marry, she can marry them and be a fine wife, if that is what she wants. Yes. And what if she if decides to marry to some you, when you made your own decisions. You, you made your own money. I'm a man. Of course I did. I understand and? where you're coming from, my good man, but... With the changing of the times, women have more opportunities now than they ever had before. And it is our duty, as men, to stand aside and let them have those opportunities. There will be a quietly muttered, or you'll be stood aside. But she's trying her best not to say that out loud. <laughs> he, he honestly looks... Sadly, but honestly, looks perplexed. Sir, would you insist that the queen simply be married off so that a man could make the decisions for her? Well, many a man has said that that would be better, but she's proven herself to be an apt ruler. And if the queen is capable point, of it, then why not your daughter? Because my daughter was not raised to be an apt ruler. My daughter was raised to be a wife. No, 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 no. Not an apt ruler. An honor and duty to the family. It was an accident of birth and the... And the fact she had no brothers was the reason the queen is the queen. She was exactly. raised to be a princess. Yeah. Regardless, your daughter was raised to be a fine woman. Allow her that freedom to be a fine woman. Well, allow me to be a pragmatist, then, since I understand that uh, you would be more receptive to pragmatism. If you come to dinner tonight and approach your daughter with these views and tell her the things that you've told us right now, how likely do you think it is that she'll come home? It's reasonable she'll come home. 
We're running off to some tropical island with no idea where, what, how. Ridiculousness. I will simply I mean, tilt my head forward and raise my eyes. Uh, my eyebrows. <laughs> Surely she's not so foolhardy as to think that that's a good plan. Which means she has to come home. Believe me, we have tried to talk her out of it. But might I suggest that you try a little bit more of a gentle tact in this matter? I love my daughter. I love all of my daughters. And when was the last time you told her? <laughs> he actually looks almost offended at the thought that he should have to tell her because because you don't do that <laughs> what she Morgana will start with the bless you thank you August <laughs> and he literally he looks absolutely like and then he gets what she well, she knows. Of course she knows. I mean, if, if I wasn't a loving father, would I not have made sure she was educated in all of the things that a lady should be? Would I not be searching for a good, good husband to, to help her, to guide her? If she, if then, she knew, she would run away after an argument. Yes, it does seem rather... Um rather logical that if she knew these things she would just run away from you because obviously I haven't raised her to be as pragmatic as I thought I had <laughs> I will tell you this you're aware of my family I assume the Cromwells hell not well, I am, um, I suppose, sort of a black sheep in the family. They sent me to a boarding school when I was young and uh, have had little to do with me ever since. They don't love me, or if they do, then how would I know? The problem is that your daughter feels that way because of how you've treated her growing up. You have treated her as an object to be married off. Something that you need to train to build up, to marry to someone else so that your family can increase its standing. I understand that you love your daughter, but the problem is that it doesn't seem that way to her. But fine, I'll make sure she understands that of course I did this all out of love to make sure that she would make a fine wife and that we could marry her to a nice man. I mean, it's. I would never let her live with some monster or something. And I guarantee you, he'll be thoroughly vetted. Mm. Of course. But what choice does she have in the matter? If I, if your parents came to you and said to you, you must marry this woman. You have never met, of course. But she has been thoroughly vetted, and we assure you that it is uh, in the benefit of the family. How would you feel? And he just looks at you as if you just asked, how would you feel if aliens came down and decided to use your bathroom? Now, I understand I'm... that this is... No. I know what the She's... next words out of your mouth are going to be. You're going to say, I'm a man... And that would never happen to me, because I'm a man. But, that being said, consider it, if you can. And he frowns. Because, no, you're exactly right. That's exactly what he would, like, what? They don't do that to men. Men pick their own things and forge their own paths, right? And he just kind of... All she's been taught has been for this. What else is she going to do? You will Other than foolish thoughts of running away to tropical islands. 
If given a chance, she will find a life of her own and make you proud. She's a very intelligent young woman. You just need to give her that chance. As you would, I'm sure... And I'm sorry if this sounds crass, given everything. If she was your son, as I'm sure you would with your son. She would be proud if she was a boy forging her own path. Why is the fact that she is a woman make it any different? Other than because she is a woman. And you, you see where Abigail get that, got that pursed lips look as he's rolling this thought around in his head. And to a degree, because of how he's been raised and everything else, it's distasteful but at the same time he's a he's actually a fairly pragmatic logical human to cut so to the chase a little, a little like how Abigail just realized that there were options he's now wondering if there are options to cut to the chase there are there are only really two options you meet with her you help her grow or she leaves you and you never get to see her again which would you rather it truly is does come down to the matter of choice and much of that is just how the history of things i understand where you have been raised and how you understand the world of women if women do these things because that's how the way things are but they had They've done that previously because they had no other options afforded to them. There are options being afforded to them now. If Absolutely. You if that's you may do not provide good options for her, then she will take the options of going to a tropical island. Because whether, whether you are provided or not, she has other options now. Yes. She wants to forge her own path. And if it means leaving the country to do that, then that is what she will do. He looks a little defeated and probably with some of the most emotion you've seen come out of him, it's, it's kind of a sadness and, and in truth, it's a bit of a fear. She's, and I mean, no offense. I know that it bothers my wife, but it, she's still my Abigail, but the world doesn't just see her as my Abigail. She already is going to be ostracized because of what's happened. Can you imagine if she doesn't have the protection of of a good husband? As I told your daughter when we spoke with her, you can see by myself and my compatriots and who I work with as equals, not everyone shares that viewpoint. Correct. And even True, if True, but I'll many admit... do. Many yes. do, and that would be present regardless of where you go. There, there are. But now add to that that she is a woman trying to forge her path in a less than generally accepted womanly way. She will not be the only woman doing that in this day and age. Quite so. And even if this is so just now, times are changing, and they will you have change. Children. Do any of you have children? Not yet. Hope to someday. A father's job is to protect his children. How does one protect their child from all of that? By loving them and giving them the tools to succeed in whatever way they fashion themselves to. One day you have, have to let them fly the coop. In any case. Families have been, uh, fathers have been protecting their children since the dawn of time. You prepare them and you give them the tools. You give yes. them a safe place where they know they can come back to to be loved. In any case, we have given you the options. We have shown you what the decisions and what the outcomes might be. Your duty as a father now, I expect is to meet with your daughter tonight, and... Of course I'll meet with my daughter. Patch things up. But I want you to understand, 
as you, some of you expect to one day be parents. There is nothing more painful than holding your child while they cry and you can't do a damn thing about it. Not a bloody thing. Mm. But you can. You have options to you. They are tough options. Ma Madam, when she's shut out because she's a woman, when she's shut out because she's Bujum. I can't make them not shut her out. I can hold her when she cries, but I can't make them. I can't change it, and I can't... I can't make it a safe place for her if I don't make it a safe place for her. Such is the burden of parenthood. Indeed. Don't you think it's better that to... Is true. Don't, don't you think it would be better to support her in what she wants to do? rather than break her down to what you think she wants to be. The man of your standing speaking out on the behalf of women and on behalf of Boojums would would help. It would carry a lot of weight. That's very smart. Out of character by the GM. Take a hundred extra XP. AP. Whatever the yeah. fuck we call it. That's where I was heading... It's very good. He just kind of sits there and and again you you see the same pondering looks that you saw in Abigail. We've seen your wares. They are very much sought after. And what would it say of a high society family? They can't even buy your wares because of their stance on the existence of women and Bujum in places that they feel that they shouldn't be. I'll meet with my daughter this evening. Where and what time? I will give him the address and the time. And he'll nod kind of curtly. He does he does jot it down. He's definitely a you know, note person and She has requested our presence there for support on her own end, and I believe it would be wise for us to be there as well just for discretionary matters. You understand? He'll nod. You, you hear something under his breath, like balderdash or something like that, but he nods. Right. Tonight, then. And you guys are kind of flood, you know, shown out. All right, you guys have a few hours before dinner. Again, anything I need to know, anything you guys are doing? Find some way to pass the time. Read a book. I might. Report back to our employee to let them know what's going on, or is the office closed today? I'm going to pen a couple of letters to... Well placed boots and seeing if they've heard anything about these boats and where they're going. Um, uh, is it is there like a map shop or some place like that where I could use oh view a world map to see if I can plot out where the island would be. I'm sure you can find um, a map shop somewhere. And the best you're going to be able to get is some sort of region. And even at that, probably somewhere in that Florida Keys, Caribbean area. I say you probably just go to a library. 
they have yeah. yeah, the library, and then it doesn't cost you anything. But the best you're going to get is somewhere in that region. Also would be open on Sunday. Yeah, it's not, yeah, sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. It's still Sunday. It's not open. You can go sometime tomorrow. Are you guys going to try to go to the office and see if it's open? I mean, I'll swing by there. I don't know if everybody else wants to go. I mean, there's no real need for us all to go. Only one person really needs to give the report. I'm going to read a book. Practice some magic. Sure, you'll get it right one of these days. <laughs> one day. One day. Out of character, Brad, are you going to tell her that she has the capability of some form of magic? I'm keeping that to myself because I wasn't looking for that. I will. Right. I may spring it up at some point. I was kind of. Okay. Gonna keep it in my just... back pocket and maybe bring it up at the meeting. We'll see how things go. Okay. Although I really don't want to reveal for my my own magical potential right now. Well, just fine. Absolutely understandable and fine. I was just silly GM curiosity. Oh yeah, no, no, I get you. All right. So, is Nigel going by himself to the offices? I'll accompany him. Okay. So it's unlocked. You go into the meeting room, and like there's a buzzer. Actually, there's probably a buzzer for you to get in. You have to like push a button, it rings a bell type of thing. Because mm -hmm. it's not just going to be completely unlocked. It's in any big look that silly at me. All right. And, um, it's probably the smallest troll you've ever seen in your life answers the door like slight of build on a troll for a troll i mean he's so bigger than most people but and even his horns are not that big and they're fairly straight in back and they curve but just kind of at the tips and they kind of just curve down. So almost like a goat horn. Sorry? Ibex. Ibex. Yeah, something like that. And he looks at you guys quizzically. Ah, welcome. Please come in. How can I help you? Uh, well, we were taken on as uh, filling the position previously, and we wanted to report ah. our current assignment. Ah, perfect, lovely. Come in, have a seat. Would you like some tea? Ah, uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Evans, I presume? Precisely. I've been so curious to see if she chose well. Please, give me a moment to get the kettle on, and I'll be right back. Absolutely. And he wanders off, and it takes a few minutes, and he comes back with the little tea cart you know, and teacups and the little things and a plate of biscuits and the whole thing. And, you know, he, you know, tea, sugar, cream, would you like a biscuit? Now, please, you must be Nigel. I am, and I'll gesture for River to Sorry, yourself. Nigel, and he'll use your full name, Nigel whatever. Nigel full name. And, yeah. And I'm <laughs> sorry, I don't know exactly... No offense, Mr. But it's easier to tell which one you would be. And which one are you, Miss? Uh, you may call me River. River. Delighted. Please, tell me how you've done so far. Uh, well, you are familiar with the case, I take it. A missing young lady, elf named Abigail. Her father is La, who runs the. Yes. Yes, but very good. So we have located the young lady. Uh, she is alive and well. Already. She... Yes. Yes, we. Oh, we... she's not dead. Yes, we we located he seems her the same day. 
Lovely. Um, she has taken up at a boarding house, and I'll give the, the neighborhood near the docks where she's at. Um, mm -hmm. She, When we found her, she was wanting to sign up for a group that is claiming to be taking Bujums across the, the sea to an island somewhere in the Americas to start a new colony. And she was in, intending to leave there for herself. We so far have convinced her to at least see into other possibilities. Uh, we've just come from a meeting with her father, agreeing to meet with her this evening, and discussed, and, and I believe we've made some progress in getting him to see the wisdom of looking at other options. Okay. Good, good. Uh, but, but, but go back a moment. They're trying to get Bujum to go to create a colony. Correct. How very odd. I thought so as well. I do not know the details myself as I was positioned up high away from the meeting. They did not seem to be particularly fond of humans, understandably. Um, from what I've told from our contact on the ground, uh, he said there seemed to have been some sort of magical enhancement to the convincing. Well, that's nefarious. I mean, it sounds nefarious to me. Whatever do you mean, Nigel? She was uh, very eloquent and uh, good at speaking and gave all the facts. And now he's kind of looking between the two of you because I, this feels like a different account. And, and I'll simply kind of nod in that direction of, and, and give a see what I'm talking about look. I will get back to August in a moment. No worries. I, I see. That's may have something that should be kept an eye on. However, I'm to the point. I'm, however, delighted. It seems like she did choose well, and that you all are absolutely the right people for the job which is brilliant, it can sometimes be hard to find good help. Brilliant, brilliant. Mm. Ever, ha, have the team do come in Monday for their next assignments. I think I have something up your alley. Absolutely. And, and, and brilliant, good job. Oh, um, any expense reports, make sure you turn them in, proper like. Oh, certainly, we'll, we'll provide receipts. Good, good. Expense reports? Well, I mean, if you if you had expenses. Like, you do know what an expense report is, right? That's probably stuff that the lodges take care of. Well, I think Jill here can explain it to you, or she can later. I honestly don't like paperwork myself. Good lord. Look, my place is out on the front lines, in the frontier of uh, mapping out and planning where, where to set up camps and settlements walking around um, the city at least there were, there were some nice animals to talk to he doesn't seem bothered by that at all like he's completely on face like yes yes that sounds fine
Anything else? I think that is all of consequence. Well, lovely moment. meeting you. We will definitely give you a full report when we return on Monday. Brilliant. I will see you Monday bright and early. Oh, please do understand bright and early is never before nine. Understood. I mean, we're not uncivilized. And he basically cleans up from the tea and puts everything back on the cart and wheels it off towards the kitchen. It was nine bright and early. Most of the day is gone by then. You need to discover the nightlife. Um, Very different world when you're dealing in an urban setting. All right. Anybody else doing anything before dinner? Not really. Nope. Dinner it is. Oh, sorry. That's right. I got to go through that real quick. Um, absolutely spend the AP on conversation. August, streetwise. There's, now that you're specifically kind of looking into the ships and all of that, right? Yeah, it's it's that's the fifth ship. Nothing bad has been said. Like no one's come back and said, "Oh, that's awful." Apparently, no one's just come back either, though. In part, the thought being is is that they're happy over there, right? Um, there actually was at least a couple of people who did not get letters from someone, <laughs> but claimed to know somebody who has a loved one who went, and that they've gotten letters. Okay. Um, but it's all kind of. I have a you know a friend who's cousin type of thing. Mm -hmm. I don't. Um. It sounds a lot like it's still rough living there, as they're still in the middle of building a lot of structures and things like that, mm -hmm. and setting up farming and you know right. Yeah. Which is expected, but again, there's no like first hand accounts of anything that you've found anyhow so far. Sure. It's all well, you know, my friend Sal's brother went and you know uh, you know Rebecca's cousin supposedly and you don't know who any of these people are to track it down at this point. Yeah. As yeah. far as at the dock itself because the ship would be leaving at this point in two days. Mm -hmm. um, the ship in question is at the docks, and they seem to be loading up mostly like food supplies. In part for the upcoming trip, probably with that much, it's to go to the colony itself. And then there's some other supplies, not like wood, but more like nails, screws, tools, things that they would have a hard time making there. Mm -hmm. Which again, all makes sense. At least as far as you can find and see. Do the crew that they use, is it the same crew or is it a different crew each time? Um, nobody can tell you for certain. Apparently at least part of it is the same crew. But since nobody you know knows the whole crew, mm -hmm. um, they will. You will find it's all Boojum. Yeah. Everybody on the ship that anybody's ever seen is Boojum. Okay. All right. Did I did I get everybody? I think so. Okay. So, yeah, I suspect the unbreaking is going to take a while to come back anyway. So, so um, you guys get there early, on time, late. Early. I don't know. Early. 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 Yeah, get, get there early, be there nice, and make sure you're all present and stuff. So, you know. Um, make sure 
sure we can get a... Yeah, I know you're going to be absolutely shocked. He is, like, exactly on time. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. like he knew it would take 12 minutes, and he left 12 minutes, and, you know, very precise, very clockwork. Uh, Abigail is probably a minute or two late, so socially speaking, not late, but not as precise as her father. Mm-hmm. And there's a very awkward silence as they kind of like, because he's, of course, stands when she shows up, right? You know. But there's just, just kind of this awkward silence, and she sits, and then he sits. And I'm sure you guys all sit. And they're just kind of awkwardly looking at each other. About a minute into the awkward silence, if no one else speaks, he goes, a tropical island, really? That is about as foolish as can be. What were you thinking, Abigail? Hmm. Well, this is off to a riveting start. It's what right. fathers will do. As fathers will do, exactly. <laughs> I will look at him, look at Abigail. You think maybe that should come up a little later in the conversation? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. I'm only here because, because you should know so you don't worry. So, foolish or not, it's my decision. And he just kind of sighs, Abigail. And you, you see him, he's, it's like he's struggling with his inner self-control issues. And you know I, I love you. And, and Abigail does soften at this. But, but an unknown tropical island is ridiculousness. Surely, you should just come home. Of course, like all young people, at the term of ridiculousness, she bristles a bit. And then, kind of impertinently, at least as her father would say, it goes, come home to what? And he's just like, what, what do you mean come home to what? I'm, I'm going to guess, but you can correct me, that all of you are giving him the side eye of, really, dude? Yeah, I'm going to tilt my head forward yeah. and raise my eyebrows again, just like it had earlier today. I'm just kind of hanging back at this point. I'm going to let this play out. He Ooh. sighs a little and goes, and we can discuss your options if you would like and and she just looks at him and goes do I have options we raised you with a sense of duty and she starts to bristle again However, maybe times have changed enough that that duty might be more open to possibilities. And you wouldn't just be saying that till I get home. If he is, my dear, and I'm sorry to interrupt, you know where to find me. If you decide you didn't leave the house again, if he decides to be foolish about this. But I don't believe he will. And he just has this look of, like, how dare anybody question his word? 
Oh my god, that was the wrong thing to say. <laughs> right. Anyway. My... Contact you for what? 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 I could... Offer her gainful employment. Sorry, try that again. I could offer her gainful employment. You what? This is a face palm. And she pops up sorry. with. <laughs> she pops up with. I've been offered a position. Oh, oh. He just like. This is back to that absolute flabbergastedness. What? What? Absolutely not. If if you can work for the company. I, I, I think. But, but, but he kind of points at you and just is like, but no, absolutely not. Oh, boy. Is a lady depending on a suitable employment for a young lady? Try that one more time. I want to make sure I heard you. Yeah. Is a lady is working as a, as a lady's companion and suitable employment for your daughter? No. <laughs> Just like without a blink, in the absolute utmost, blanketly honest gut opinion, he just looks at no. The, the the daughter I raised to be a lady is not going to be some some companion. If if you want a job, we can discuss you working for the company. I believe the term our friend was looking for is lady in waiting. Not that important. <laughs> No, ladies' companion is an actual ter is the actual term. It is. Ladies' companion is an actual thing and term, and it actually technically wouldn't be a bad position. Allow me to properly introduce myself, sir. I'm Lady Morgana Temple Whitworth. My brother is. I will use my brother's proper title. I can't think of it right now. But he well, is a marquee. That makes it a little less bad. Yes, the Earl Whit <laughs> the Earl Witch is my brother, and I find myself in need of a talented lady to act as my secretary and companion, and your daughter is greatly qualified in that. And I could give yes. her access to high society and all she may want to better herself. But if she's introduced to high society as your companion... To be introduced as a servant. We were going to so introduce her as a lady to be. That is something more than a servant. It's barely when it comes to meritable. However, I have a vast company. If if she wants a position, surely I could train my own daughter. I think that is her decision. I apologise for my interjection. Oh boy, can I uh, can I roll etiquette to see if there's any way I can I can smooth sure. this over a bit? Because <laughs> oh, like you 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 know when you're playing a you know when you're playing like a computer RPG and you've got like three options in front of you and you see that one option that goes nah I don't think that'd go down well. That was that option. <laughs> that was that one. <laughs> oh, but okay. So in all fairness, it is better than just a servant. It really actually is. And throwing out the family name does help a lot. However, in his mind, they were bringing her up to be a lady. The, so, the... like, it's it's a weird... And, and then there's the whole, but he has a company, like, if she's going to work, shouldn't she work in the family business rather than... Like, yeah, no, it yep. wasn't wrong. But yes, like... you can totally roll an etiquette and see if you can smooth over... Yeah, like psychologically, right? Better. From a psychological perspective, the important thing here is that they talk and they come to a decision that they can both agree with. 
jumping oh. in and giving her an out as an outsider is, with this guy is not a good idea. I'm, I'll I'll, tr I'll yeah, try my best. See, in all truth, no parent really wants anybody else jumping in between them and their kid. They just parents don't like that. Yeah, I was gonna. S I before that came up, I was going to say I think we've got an olive branch extended. It's probably best if we make ourselves scarce. And then that came up, and I'm just sat here like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> it's like, oh my god. <laughs> You're doing so well. You guys. Yeah. Are right. Oh, so I got a, I got funny. eleven on the etiquette check. Yeah, you can kind of smooth things over as with the etiquette check and with how he is. Your best bet is the this was part of the agreement so that she knew she had options and she would sit down and talk with you. Mm -hmm. Basically, you're you're. It'll make it a little rougher with her, so she feels like you guys were on his side, but it will smooth his. It'll calm him down. <laughs> Yeah. The important thing is to get them to talk. What they decide is secondary. It's, it's right. up to them. <laughs> oh boy. It is not fair. It is hard to be both people. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I liked it. I thought it was brilliant. Don't worry. Brilliant. <laughs> So you, you smooth it over, and the short version is they talk it through, and they actually come to some terms. She's not going to run off right now to some unknown island, you know, a, a bloody, godforsaken unknown island, apparently, according to dear old dad and, well, really everybody. Um, and... She's going to work with him at the family company to learn some of the shipping until and or when she decides something else to do. And that gives her some time to explore some options. And he's not going to rush. It does not solve the problem with mom. But I don't know that there are any easy answers for that one at all, let alone ones that you guys want to jump in on. If you do, you let me know. But at this point, you've done majestically in the fact that she's not getting on a ship. River still might. I don't know what you're going to do at River. But Abby is not getting back on a ship and is going home. <laughs> Sorry, that's brilliant, Joe. Okay. So she leaves with her father. Before um, she they leaves. They go and visit Lenny and get her stuff from the boarding house. Uh, before she leaves the inn, I will beg a moment to have a word with her in private. Okay. Absolutely. And say, I'm happy for you to. I'm, my offer remains open and if you need it at all, and I would happily act as a friend and patron to you if you need it. And and she smiles. And, and again, anytime she smiles like this, it's not quite the same because it's not on purpose, but mm. it is somewhat similar yeah. to what Elizabeth can do in the fact that there's just something brilliant about it when she smiles, right? Yeah. Whether she knows she's doing or not, it's a lot like winning smile. And yep. she smiles at you, and she just says, it's so nice to have a friend and to know that that us women can have options. And it, it was news to me, I'll admit. He may not change as much as I would like. Well, but I'm glad to smart, have a um, you can make you can drag him in the right direction. Before you go, I have you, you, you don't know you? that well, but I dragging it would be. I think you're underestimating yourself, dear. 
I think you can overcome his stubbornness. But I have but a gift again, for you. A gift? I'm sorry, yes. I don't I don't have one for you. No, no, don't worry. It's a gift. I, I expect anything in return. That would be barter of some sort. Um, I will then get her to hold out her hands and put her jewelry, pull her jewelry from my pocket and put it back on. Put it, put it in her hands. These will look oh, a no. lot nicer on by you than on the oh, shelf of some pawn so shop. No. Are you sure? Yes. Add a character? She has no idea how much you would have spent. She only knows how much she got, which at a yep. pawn shop, she'll get about a fourth of what they can expect. Yep. So she won't understand that until much later in life, probably, but she is absolutely, honestly appreciative. And so the manacles of high society snap shut once again. <laughs> that, was, that was out of the character, but yes. <laughs> All right. Anybody, anything else? Otherwise, I'm going to close this. And we can pick up again Monday morning when you guys go back to your place of business. Yeah, I will just relay to everybody that, you know, I met Mr. Evans. He was quite happy with what we did uh, to report so far. And, that, yeah, he wanted us to, to meet back on Monday, so... Anybody, anything else? Going, going? Um, no, no, I will, fine. I will not be available on the 30th. Um, we, we can't have the game on the 3rd, I think, for... And, well, no, I could do the 3rd. You can't make the 3rd? I think I... No, hold on. 30th. Are we at Gen Con by the 3rd? We're, we're at Gen Con on the 3rd, aren't we? Brad? What, what, are we wrapping the session here? Oh, the 30th. Yeah, we're wrapping up this session. Uh, so the 30th is the next game. In... Yeah, 30th I can totally do the 30th. 30th is the so... Sunday before Gen Con. So we're, I'm good there. Everybody else can make it except for Lexi? Um, me and Mithras won't be able to make it because we're going to be to visit family. Okay, so that's three people out, so we're canceling the 30th. All right. So then um, next one would be the 13th, if we keep to the current So control. I have... Because we ain't going to be able to do so the 6th, we'll be at Gen Con. Yeah, so we could... How do we feel about... How is the 23rd for everybody? The 23rd. 23rd I'm moving the 30th to the 23rd. You're, Is it you're, the 23rd one? you're still looking at July, Andy. We're going into August next. I know. What I'm suggesting is, is instead of two weeks, we do one week. 23rd of July? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I can do that. We have a meeting at 7 p.m. our time. So we'd have to wrap up earlier if we did do it next week. But other than that, we should be okay. So we could do like a three hour. Yep. Mm -hmm. How about Lexi? Would that work for you? I'd be at work. You're at work on that one? Oh, that's right. You're Gary. Okay. So that may be out. And you can, you can introduce and I can read through the notes uh, on, on it. Okay. So do we want to do a three hour on the 23rd and then plan the next section for the 13th? Okay. Sounds like a plan. Sounds reasonable. Yep. That works? I think that should be doable. All right. That All right. should be good. So we're going to do a 10 to 1. 1879 next week. Got it. Okay. I will do fancy thing mm -hmm. okay fancy. um i would say on ap you guys easily deserve 600 you guys did a lot of very excellent rp 600 
I, I think you guys did excellent role playing. Thank you. What did you guys think of direction session of this last little escapade? Intro escapade. It seemed to work fairly well. We encountered both racism and sexism. Yes. No, wait. Morgana can finish use her healthy position as a blunt object. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we encountered racism and sexism. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> That's how that played out. Hey, hey, we can bring in some ageism. And some... It feels historically appropriate. <laughs> as, I right. said, as I said in the chat earlier, I think I think I played Waymon a tad more smooth than I had actually originally intended, but it seemed to work just fine. Sometimes you have an idea of a character until you play the character you don't really know, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's gone the other way with me in August because, you know, he was supposed to be the chatty one like Waymont and he's not. He's, yeah. It just. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's one of those things. I think good characters evolve as you play yeah. them. Oh, definitely. So I, I, I'm enjoying it. I think it's fabulous. I think you guys have done beautifully. Just to check that six. 600. Does that include the 100 bonus you threw us out earlier, or is it in addition to? It does not include that. So that's that fine. Was so a bonus. Our total should be 1100 then. Yeah. Plus, uh, if you did journal. Plus, if you did journal. Yeah, I didn't do a journal. I should probably do something about that. Oh, and what is yeah. it for the journal? Um, So there was still the. Some people weren't as about how to do points. So, do we have a problem with 50 per journal? For, per session journal. So, like, if you write five little things, it's still just the 50. Because it's not to make it harder on anybody. It's just a little bit to encourage it, but not to, if somebody doesn't do it, you know what yeah, I mean? Little bonus. Little bonus. Is 50 fine? Does everyone feel like that's fair? Yep. Yep, Seems that's fine. Nice. Perfect. Then it's 50 if you did your journal. Then I did not. That's okay. It's it's not a requirement. I, did, I did, promised. I did use the relating to my character background, so, you know, if that counts. A character background totally great. counts. Um, All right. How are we, I presume we are doing karma spending for, um, sorry, AP spending for karma as per the, the rule book? Um, as far as I remember, you get karma back, basically, when you go to bed that night. Right, we're doing it that way. That's fine. Right? That's the way I would anyway. So. Is that Brad? Am I remembering this wrong? So just, yeah, you you can buy back your karma once per day. Uh, so yeah, essentially just whenever you rest is fine. Rules as written, because the game was written before... Or on 4th edition, it'd come out where everything was balanced. It was written to cost 10 APs per point of karma. Uh, I don't have a problem with it because of how things have been balanced and changed with karma. If we just make it where karma replenishes is free, that's how Earth on 4th edition works. And yeah, that's I, I don't that like I the idea of having later. to pay. Yeah, I don't like the idea of having to pay for it because I think that that's. It made more sense with Earth on Classic, which is what we had to work with before, when you had a right. much larger karma pool. Yeah. But now you only okay. have like a couple of points each day, so. That is that okay with everybody? Awesome. Then that you don't have to pay back for it. That's well, fine. Good. Good Perfect. All right, you guys. Uh, no, uh, no, 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 no. Hang on a minute. We, we, you, you, we, we ought, to, we ought to spend even more XP. What, what, what did you think we were going to say at that? <laughs> okay, look, 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 look. When it comes to changes on rules and stuff, I like to make sure that the table is happy with the decision, and that I'm not just, you know, single-handedly fiating everything, because that would be rude. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right. Yeah. I think you guys did fabulous. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you guys have a good day. All right. See ya. Bye. 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 Real quick, on like downtime, uh, go and do map making uh, just so I can get tags on it. Absolutely.
Okay. Thank cool. You. No problem. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, I had fun. I hope everybody else did. I did. Yes. I right. hope I didn't come across as too rude earlier or anything. No, well, you kind of had to, you know, it's part of just being in character. You kind of have to stand up to the dude. Yeah, no, it's it's true. I'm just talking about with other players. It's like there were, were a few moments there where if I had a monocle, it would have fallen out. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, Joel, what you're, what you're talking about with Morgana has been at the end there. Like I said, from a player aspect, I totally get where you're coming from and, and where you're going. But from in character, I'm just going, ah, oh, gee. <laughs> she's 100 using her position as blood. Yeah, you know, she just she has power, in it, a certain amount of power influence, and she's willing to hit people with it. She's ended up a lot more political than I think I had originally planned. Well, and just how things have gone, you know, like we said, the character is evolving. I, I was sort of expecting her to be more wild child than she's ended up. She's actually a little bit more measured. Brutally and aggressively, um, I'm going to improve the world. And if I have to smash people around the head with my with my position or the furniture, I'm willing to do it. Yeah, I think her brother got most of the wild child on that one. That's why he got sent over to uh, Hong Kong. So you know. Yeah. Which is why she's suspicious about people getting free trips to foreign places. <laughs> Totally makes yeah. sense. If you haven't gathered, I played the brother in a campaign that Joel's running. Yeah, I think it's actually for um, Brad's purposes, the campaign I was making references to in my write up for the Castellany for the Swords book. Oh, gotcha. Okay. He is one of the people who was shipwrecked and ended up staying with them and actually managed to basically, by being a drunken gambling party boy, convince one of the swords in the town to be a lot more reasonable and friendly to them than he might have been. Hey everybody, sent... I'm a giga chad. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially he befriended the guy because the guy was the sort of serious warrior, one of the serious warriors of the town and was suspicious and he went out and went, hi, what are you interested in? Here, let us drink together and become buddies and proceeded to run a series of very good introduction roles and diplomacy type roles and become friendly and you know and get through the guy's standoffishness and discover a love of gambling and drinking at which point they became friends and have just finished digging their way through a um anunnaki ruin and stopping some samsets nicking stuff from it oh that's always fun samsets. So that's going to get some bits of write-up towards stuff for the Samset book because I've got some interesting, weird ideas. Yeah, that's the the next focus is getting that book written up. I, I, I may be having a sit down at you when we're together in person at Gen Con and going, so, the Anunnaki and trying to do, do the whole Aliens thing a lot more. <laughs> the Nostal one would put in books, but I need to get a bunch of that right in my head so I know what we're writing about. Well and, because I'm quite a, well, and quite a bit of it is being left as a deep mystery, so not necessarily the canon that we come up with in our heads that we're writing to will be the canon that everybody else plays with. I 100% want to work out what our canon is and then never write it down. Yeah, and if like, some future writing takes in a different direction, that, that's fine, but I need to know what our canon is. Oh yeah, no, so I, I can stay I, consistent. I one hundred percent agree, and I have, I do similar things in my head. I, I need I need the scaffolding to build the, the foundation to build everything up, and you will never see the foundation. But I need to know what we're basing it on. Yep, also, yep. I can think of a lot of fun, crazy shit that makes sense for them. Oh yeah, that's that's exactly how I work. So no, I'm. I'd have been a lot less there with they you. Taking, if they were taking the boojums to the grub, just to the grub homeland. Okay, um, so if you get your professional rank to two, all of the, your profession skill, four core skills to two, yeah. uh, you go up to novice? Uh, you can train then to go up to novice. 
Yep, you have to, you'll find a trainer and then train yourself up. If you're looking in the book for the information, um, let me find the page. Two, six, six, and thereabouts. And two, six, eight for advancing tears. I happen to have them open myself. <laughs> yep, yep. And, and that's in the player. Obviously, guy. if anyone needs a loan, if anyone needs a loan for the training fees, Morgana might be good for it. Well, honestly, at this point, I think we could write that off as a business expense. Yeah, reasonable. <laughs> I like your thinking. If someone explains the concept of business expenses to Morgana, they might be getting a receipt. They might be getting a receipt from the pawn shop. <laughs> <laughs> but that more well, I think somebody needs to explain business expenses to River. Look, <laughs> <laughs> all, all my business expenses is paper for map making inks and quills for map making and bullets. Yes, we th those are indeed business expenses. <laughs> Morgan is entirely coming in from the but you own the company point of view, I think. <laughs> Your company still has business expenses. <laughs> that's what you have accountants for. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why I have accountants. <laughs> I am an accountant in real life. <laughs> oh, tumbleweed. All right, well, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up the recording here with the <laughs> our post-session talk. So for everybody still viewing, I hope you all enjoyed. Um, if you didn't get a chance to tune in for the whole thing, we will have this uploaded on our YouTube channel later, as along with the recording from the previous session. Um, as always, if there's any questions or anything that you want to know or we'll find more about the game, uh, feel free to look us up, facetgames.com. You can also message over on Discord. Uh, we have an invite for that on fastagames.com if you wanted to join the server. And uh, yeah, I hope everybody enjoyed it. We will see you next time.